USA. Yo, 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 Yes, it's Thursday. We got our special guest host, Jess Hilarious, with us this morning. Hello. Good morning, Hi, Jess guys. Hilarious. And this is the hundredth episode of our show on BET. Yes, yes. let me see if I know how to do this popper. Oh my god, what is that? Hey. Hey. Okay. I didn't know that does it like that. You got five kids, you ain't never known that. No. Wow. <laughs> I've never done that oh. before. <laughs> you look old popping it. Like, you didn't even know what was happening. Congratulations. Yeah. Breakfast Club. I don't know what that means. 100th episode. What do you get for 100 episodes? About 100. Why did I say Bitcoin? No, I don't say BET 100. Oh, my BET 100. Yeah, BET 100. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what are they going to do for y'all? They going to see y'all $100? I have no okay. idea. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might be right. <laughs> that sounds about right. A hundred dollars. hundred dollars a piece sounds about right. <laughs> that sounds about right. Is That's that a bonus? Right. Is that a bonus for 100 episodes? No. Oh. Okay. Like nice, so. Envy. Thank you. Yeah. I just came from the club. And, uh, all right. And then, and then go invite me when it's over. He's like, yo, it, it, just to let you know, yo, we hit, yo. I invited you at like, because usually you up late. So I've been like, yeah. you know what? It was like 1.30. I said, you know what? I'm, I'm going out. I'm like, if Jess is in town, let me uh -huh. tell Jess, yo, Jess, if you up, swing by. You I went out, out at 1.30? I, right. I go out with Jocelyn one time, and he he think I just be out <laughs> here in the streets. How you leave in the house at 1.30, and you 77 years old? I'm not, I'm not 77. <laughs> I feel 78. It was a, a Jamaican boshment. So oh, it was, my uh, God. I would have loved that. So it was... Uh, it was a friend, my wife's friend's birthday. Uh, shout to Toya T Styles, happy birthday! Hey. So she did like a little bashment uh, out here in the uh, city. Uh, it was nice. So you was out there doing like Jamaican chants, like "Pond the River, Pond the River, Box your mouth, <laughs> he Box your mouth, your mouth. <laughs> Box your mouth." <laughs> kind of, sorta. Oh, but it, but it, it was dope. It was nice. It was uh, at a club called Musica, that which is a, a couple blocks down. Yeah. Uh, shout to Cardi B. I seen Cardi B. Cardi B was there. French hey. Montana. I seen Rich the Kid. Who else did I see? Hey, there? Good uh, Kodak Black was there. Oh my God! It was a, it was a nice little vibe, but it was private. But it was a vibe. Yeah. It, was, it was really, 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 really good. So really after the party, I had to drive the wife back home yeah and then I just turned right back around and came straight back in couldn't even lay down for a couldn't second couldn't even lay down for a second but Dang. it was great great vibes it was yeah. it was it was a nice party good celebration oh yeah like you was there yeah I, I would have <laughs> loved it Jess would have loved it I know Jess would have loved it that's why I hit Jess it. that's why as soon as I said let Lord. me hit Jess but Jess hit me at <laughs> Jess hit me at about 545 like great now you hit <laughs> yeah, me now crazy yeah crazy. but that was my night and I'm tired I ain't even gonna lie amazing mm. I don't go out on school nights nice. I don't know. 1.30 sound crazy. Yeah, it was a little crazy. Mm. But today on the show, Cedric the Entertainer will be joining us. He'll be stopping by. Woo. He has a new book called Flipping Box Cars. We'll mm. talk to him. And Tiffany Haddish will be stopping through as well. Tiff got a new record. Tiff got a record. Oh, with she little, do? Yeah, with Little John and Fivio Foreign. Fabio Foreign. Fabio Foreign. Fabio Foreign. Fabio Foreign. <laughs> This guy. Oh, you you enjoying yo. yourself over there? I do. A clown. <laughs> <laughs> what you mean? <laughs> oh. He's a dope. It's oh not even goodness. hype in here. No, Y'all just being clowns in the morning. It's, 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 it's not. Bring me some more, Tim. It's, it's not. Ain't no more? <laughs> no, it's no more. Damn. All right, here you go. Here's one more. Here you go. Oh, look, so I don't got a show in Jacksonville, Florida today. Y'all, just want to let y'all know, I moved the Thursday show to Friday and Saturday, y'all. So, hey, yeah, okay. yeah just, just because I know it's Friday, I mean, it's Thursday, and people still got work Friday, people got to take their kids to school on That's Friday, right. so it's just like, and the nose tickets were moving a little slower, because it's Thursday, so I'm like, y'all can just come Friday and Saturday. What's so, the club? Jacksonville, the Comedy Zone in Jacksonville, Florida. Duvo, I'll Duvo! be there. I'll be there tomorrow on Saturday. All right. Well, let's get the show cracking. Teslin Figaro's up next. Of course, you got your front page news. And don't go anywhere. It's our 100th episode on BET. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the God, Jess Hilarious. We are The Breakfast Club. And let's get in some front page news. What up, Tiz? What's going on, DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the God, The Breakfast hey. Club. Hey, hey yeah. Let's jump right yep. into it. They caught him, huh? They finally called him after nearly two weeks on the run. Mm -hmm. The escape murderer that we watched uh, crab walk up the wall to escape is finally caught. Let's take a listen. Breaking news, Danilo Cavalcante has finally captured. The 14-day manhunt is over. His heat signature was detected by aircraft in a wooded area in South Coventry Township. He was taken into custody with the help of a police dog at around 8 o'clock this morning. State police were assisted by Border Patrol, U.S. Marshals, ATF, and Customs in that search. He will now head to SCI Phoenix Prison in Montgomery County. 
I wonder if he exhausted all his energy trying to figure out how to escape, but didn't have no plan after the escape. He definitely didn't have a plan. <laughs> Clearly, he had zero plan. He got out, what which was probably, amazing. Yeah, what if he didn't know that he could really do that? Word. Like, <laughs> well, you know, they said yeah. they said uh, an inmate escaped. Uh, I guess you said a couple of weeks before that, or a couple of months before that. So he mm-hmm. knew the route. He knew mm-hmm. how to get out. But mm-hmm. once he got out, he didn't figure out what he was going to do after right. that. He, ain't, he, he had no plan. No. Like Jess said, though, he probably didn't know that he yeah. really was going to get out for real. Yeah, <laughs> man. So once you out, I mean, but he did. He did stay out two weeks though. That's a long, you know. He stayed out two weeks. Yeah. He escaped a gunfire, and you know, wow. was able to dodge it. But that's not good for law enforcement. The fact that he got out, he had no right. real plan. He looked beat up and battered. He looked like he looked he looked tired. He looked yeah. like he wanted to go back. Like, please come get me. Yeah, please yeah. come get me. So it looked like they should have caught him two weeks ago. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, especially- Especially since it was over 500 uh, agents that was looking for him. They made sure to point out he had a Philadelphia Eagles uh, shirt on uh, when he was called. But, yeah, he looked he looked worn out, probably relieved. Like, you know, it's mm-hmm. finally over, I, I would assume. And they, and they posed for a picture with him like he wasn't out nine days. You know what? what I'm saying? You didn't see the picture? <laughs> no, I didn't. He posed, all yeah, the police posed. officers posed oh. with him. It took y'all nine days to catch that man. Oh. There ain't nothing to be taking pictures yeah. about. The dog, <laughs> the dog bit him on the top of his head. Yeah. Oh, that's why he bleeding. That's why yeah. he bleeding. Oh, okay. yeah. And I mean, just to point out again, uh, this just shows that it is possible to apprehend somebody without shooting them in the back. Just thought I'd put that mm-hmm. on out there. Mm-hmm. Now let's talk about this Georgia gas tax. Yeah, uh, Governor Kemp, uh, Governor Brian Kemp has declared a state of emergency and temporarily suspended the state's tax on gasoline in an effort to reduce the impact of inflation. Because, by the way, inflation is still happening. Uh, He claimed that the actions were in response to policies coming at the federal level. He said that President Joe Biden has caused Georgians to feel the brunt of negative economic conditions. Now, the executive order went into effect on yesterday. It goes through October 12th. And uh, they said it's going to save Georgians around 30. 31 cents per gallon uh, and 35 cents on diesel fuel. So this is really important, guys. Uh, The consumer... I was just released that the consumer price index rose 3.7 mm-hmm. percent uh, and that the gasoline uh, prices have jumped 10 percent in August following a 2 percent increase in July. So this is a very real thing. And Governor Kemp, uh, shout out to him, you know, for taking action on it. Yeah, it's it's very nasty out there as far as inflation, as far as the prices that keep increasing on everything, not just gas, on food, on, on everything. So I think they should suspend this all over the place and let people try to get their self back together first because it's very yeah. expensive for a lot of people out there. Well, that's a great point that you mentioned. Uh, in 2022, President Biden did call on Congress. This is why I'm always pushing about state mm-hmm. and local government, because the governor can go in, sign an executive order like he did here. Also, uh, Ron DeSantis, you know, as much as folks don't like him and have a lot of reasons to not like him, he did the same thing. You know, when people were struggling with gas, went in, made an executive order, said, you know, Biden's not doing anything. Let's reduce the, the, the gas. When Joe Biden asked to do this in 2022, uh, Congress uh, couldn't make it happen. And a lot of folks, including Nancy Pelosi, was like, well, you know, we don't know if this is really going to help or not. So, again, Democrats, this is why, you know, a lot of folks didn't like it when Governor Kemp won uh, when he beat Stacey Abrams. Well, he passed out Kemp cards during COVID. He gave folks money, put money in their in their pockets. So just remember this when uh, Kemp runs for president, probably in 2028. Yeah. You know, these are the type of things that people actually remember that That's make right. a difference money yep. in their pockets. Yep. Right. And Democrats are sitting around trying to figure it out. And meanwhile, you know, they're signing executive orders on the state level. And that's crazy because, uh, you know, you just said that the inflation has went up 3.7 percent and the median household income has fell to 74,000, which is 4,000 less than 2019. But yet, uh, you know, the Biden administration is bragging about the economy. Mm. You know what I mean? If right. people don't feel it directly mm-hmm. impact their pockets positively or negatively they don't want to hear nothing about no their economy yeah because it, it feels like crime is up and i know people say well yeah. crime is down and they play with the numbers well murder's down but robbery's up so mm-hmm. yeah but it, it feels like crime is up it feels like all the prices for everything is is, is rising that's like not crazy a feel. it is <laughs> yeah and that's what i was even saying that about even with with i with what i do you mean being a stand-up comedian on tour I remember when, like, people was like, oh, no, it ain't going to affect the, the rich people or the people that make a lot of money. It does because we need the people who have nine to fives and the people that the, the gas going up, everything right. going up. You're not going to have no money to go to no shows. Right. So they don't it have does no extra change. everybody. Yeah, yeah. it or, does. Or, you know, you got to pick and choose. If, yeah, if, right. if I'm going to go see Jess or I'm going to go see Beyonce. Beyonce you know Definitely what I mean? come see me. I'm going to go see Jess or yeah. I'm going to go see Drake. You know what I mean? Yeah, go see Drake. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
yeah. And, and I just I just want to put this on the record because again, this is really important. You know, Democrats last year again. I just want to put on the record. Uh, Speaker Nancy Pelosi said she was worried that all companies and retailers uh, may uh, may pocket much of the savings. But the bottom line is, people need the relief. So again, this is one That's of those it, things man. where Democrats and Republicans, including Democrats, so y'all say we take it so easy on, but this is one of those times where Democrats had an opportunity to you know make people feel this impact and decided to side with the energy companies that's just the bottom line Where so them dollars uh, this, at? put some money right. in people pocket mm -hmm. yeah all Help right people yep. save some money that's what yeah. they remember well that is front yep. page news thank you tez uh-huh we'll see you in a couple of minutes everybody else get it off your chest 800-585-1051 if you need to vent phone lines are wide open call us up now it's the breakfast club good morning the breakfast club This is your time to get it off your chest. Keep calling. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Hey, peace and blessings. Glory to God. You know, Sean Stone is on the radio. Hey, Sean Stone. Sean Stone, what up? Hey, good morning, Jess. How you doing, beautiful? I'm, I'm good. How you doing? Hey, hey, Jess, I'm good. Hey, Sean, man, what's up? Uh, Envy, what's up, man? What peace up, brother? King. Yeah, hey, Jesse, you, you you about to get pregnant soon, Jesse. You, you, you gotta stop booty popping on TikTok like that. I don't even be on TikTok. Who done stole my video and put it up there? Booty popping, get you pregnant? Yeah, why would you oh, say something sister. like that? Oh, my sister. My sister. You got a new boyfriend, right, guys? I don't have a little boyfriend. I have a man. He said a new, new boyfriend. boyfriend. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> oh, did I you? I, 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 I thought you got a little boyfriend, huh? Oh. Okay, yeah, I do. I do. I have a boyfriend, yes. Yes, right. I'm not... Yes, I'm not Trav. You know, last time Trav was on the radio, Trav said he gave birth to you and Jay Clee. I don't know what that means. I don't know. I don't know what he's talking about. But yes, I do. I do have a boyfriend. You're right. But I don't. Yeah. I ain't not wrong. Me still booty popping a little bit as long as y'all don't I'm see. Just saying, if, if I was your boyfriend, I would leave it in. Oh, okay. That's why you yeah. not. If I was your boyfriend, this guy's crazy. <laughs> but, yo, <laughs> but yo, I want to talk about Tyrese. Envy, what's up? <laughs> yo, yo, y'all ain't tired of talking about that man. I was ready to say y'all no. tired. I am. No, because I didn't. I didn't get to talk about Tyrese. Yet. You know I. I guess the receipts that Tyrese was talking about. Evie, you know that Tyrese was taking your wife that he got a new car in Florida Island? He was flexing, bro. <laughs> he, was, he was trying. But look, let me tell you, I, I, I made a, a deal with the um, with the people in the background that I won't talk about Tyrese anymore. All right, uh, I got you. Not well, the background up here. I'm talking Mac about uh, people in the industry. They they had a, 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 a private call and told me don't talk about Tyrese anymore. So I'm Illuminati not going to talk about Tyrese anymore. That's right. The Illuminati right. called him and they said, well, <laughs> y'all got to stop because it looked like an old school industry love yeah. world. Yeah. Yeah. And they're making the block high. They're making the block high. He's lucky he wasn't Maxwell, though. Oh, you don't want to talk about Maxwell. I don't. You never say nothing about Maxwell. Never mind Maxwell. Shout to Maxwell. All right, Hater. Why don't you tell Sean to me the hater? Why don't you tell Sean to me? If I was in the radio game, Sean, man, I'd be boxing your mouth. Did you hang up Whoa. on Sean's phone? <laughs> Whoa. It's too early in the morning. That was a flirt. That was yeah, a flirt. That was. That was a flirt. That was. Crazy. That was a mm. flirt. I didn't even have breakfast yet, Sean. He flirted uh. with you. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's a new day. This is your time to get it off your chest. Wait. Wake up! Whether you're mad or blessed, it's time to get up and get something. Call up now. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? It's Jack Jack. Good morning, Breakfast Club. Hey, good Jack morning. Jack. Good morning. Get off your chest. Okay, well, first I want to say good morning to Ballhead, Smallhead, and Guest Hilarious. Good morning, because I'm here for you, DJ Lightbright, because I feel like we got a case. Well, you said Ballhead and Smallhead. Don't no, she call you Ballhead, ball Smallhead. Small head. Who's ball head, small Oh, boy, head. small hat. That's what she meant. Because remember, you, you wear no, the small head, hat all the time. Just, just no, she's not. Shut up. She, yeah. she said ball head, small head. For you. Who you talking to? But DJ Envy. No, we need to know who you're talking to. She ain't even trying to talk to you. She called you ball head, small head. She said, hey, Jess. Hey, girl. What you got to say to Envy? Thank you, Jess. Okay, that's why you there. But DJ Envy, we got a case. Yesterday, I was watching, you hey, know, Envy. other people's Instagrams who are more richer than me. In fact, Joe, I seen that thing called Rewind Ten, right? And he's got this little Beijing thing for the Dominican, also the Puerto Ricans. He's got he's got pink represent oh, for the I saw black that. Rewind. I saw that. Rewind. Yes. Oh, you know I'm getting he's me got, some of that for Envy. Three white boys. He got whatever DJ Khaled is, but he don't have <laughs> DJ Envy representing for the Dominicans. 
Oh Why? my god. I seen that. Now, represent for the Dominicans, I'm not Dominican, but I was kind of hurt. I seen Fat Joe, I seen Cali, you know? I seen Tank, uh-huh. and, and then I seen yeah. a couple of brothers I didn't even know. They definitely should have had me on there. If that company's listen, I, I don't know how you would not have me. Mm. Honestly, DJ, and we don't want to work for you because all the Dominicans need you. And we're doing this for the Dominican Republic. I'm not that Dominican. Yes, you are Dominican. <laughs> you are. Because we need you. Yo, she said you are, and you will own this. <laughs> he is. And you admitted the other yes, day you're not I black. Yes, I need you to follow me. I love you so much. I love you so much, What's your girl. IG? What's your IG? The HCS underscore bakery. Oh, yep, so yep. she bake what? HCS underscore bakery yes. HCS. Yeah, I got a cannabis accessory and a apparel line for women, and I got a package to suggest. I'm just waiting on you. Okay, boo. HCS. The HCS underscore bakery. Is the yep. HCS, the HCS, or just HCS, HCS underscore bakery? The the HCS underscore bakery. All right, I got you. I'm I'm following you now. Thank you, mama. You're welcome. I love y'all. Have a good one, mama. Even you, boy, it's more it. What did that even mean? Yeah, you are bald with a small head, but she got the small head, bro. <laughs> That's wrong. Hello, who's this? Hello, who's this? This Hello? is Ty. What's up, Ty? Get off your chest, Ty. All right, uh, I'm calling because next week is my one year anniversary with my wife, and we have no idea what to do. One year anniversary with the wife? Y'all got to work? Yeah. No, it's on Saturday. We just, money's tight, so trying to figure out what to do. Enjoy each other. You don't got to do much. I, I, well, you I'm not good at anniversaries. I'll tell you that, mm-hmm. that for right now. I always, I, it's not that I forget mine. It's just it's yeah. like, oh, what do you do every what do you year? Do every it's year. like, yeah, how do you top? What like? What do you do? But well, where you from, brother? Uh, Right now, I stay in Greensboro. Originally from Virginia. You said Virginia? No, yeah, yeah I'm, you, I'm originally from Virginia. Oh, oh, Virginia, North Carolina Greenboro. now. Okay. Carolina. All right. Um, hmm. you, you don't know what to do for your wife? Yeah, because, like, we, we do a lot of stuff. Like, we were just on a cruise. Her family paid for our food. Uh-huh. Okay. Like, and we don't really have time with our kids. Yeah. Look, do do like, like a, do like a cute romantic scavenger hunt. Like, like that reminds y'all of when y'all first met. You ever did something like that? Like, hide, like, notes around the house that points to the, a big gift or something like that. Like, take her down memory lane. Something like that. That's dope. That's smart. Okay. Okay. You ain't feeling it. Uh, <laughs> you like, uh, wasn't feeling that one. Okay. <laughs> I'll go, I'll go to a hotel. North Carolina got great hotels. Stay at a hotel for the night. Get a little couple's massage. He said money tight, y'all. That's y'all right, forgot yeah. that part? That's why I said the scavenger hunt. Lowe's cool. some great massage places up here. That, he that said you money tight. <laughs> All right. Y'all forgot the money tight part. All right, money tight. Scavenger, <laughs> yeah. Do the scavenger hunt. How about just be honest with your wife and tell her money tight, man? They you just got, they just came <laughs> from a cruise. She understand. Well, up. Money tight. I love you, baby. And why y'all act like an anniversary is not a collective thing? Why he got to figure out right. what to do? But but hell, what, what if she do got something? Hell no. That's, That's true. Yeah. Too. What's That's her, right. what's her favorite spot to go eat? Uh, she don't know. Money tight. <laughs> what about you? You could go Chick Fil A, get a little gift card. Chick Fil A, get a little gift card for yo, uh, wow. Starbucks. Nah, they not in the seventh grade, yo. They uh, they like married. I mean, she might like Chick Fil A though. <laughs> And she might like Starbucks. She might like Chick-fil-A do, Starbucks. Yeah, stuff she like that go a long way. Yeah, do the scavenger hunt, man. Scavenger hunt is fly. I'm telling you, that's fine. Take it out memory lane. Go to the room All that right, cool. reminds you of the first time I smelled your hair. I mean, that's creepy, but like something like that. Or buy her something sexy from like Sheen or, or what's the other one? Sheen, very cheap, Boy, but y'all keep money, is the money, tight. Tight. money is tight. Sheen is cheap, they said. How cheap? In DJ know. Envy's world. In his world, bro. Oh, okay. again, Jim. Yeah, okay. we just I'm got this time of gas going up and right. bread going up. Get a gas car. Gas car is very romantic and sexy. Money is tight. <laughs> <laughs> so right. I like the scav- scavenger hunt idea, Fly. Yeah, that's it, bro. He regrets Take calling. Take it down memory <laughs> lane. No, that's dope. Or write her a love letter. Oh, I could do that. That's nice. Yeah. That's part of the scavenger. There you go. go. She you know, finds stuff and you know what? Love letters. <laughs> now he's talking about, oh, no, that, that's nice. You did that. Hey, yo, go ahead, yo. Get off this phone. <laughs> Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, you can hit us up. Now, we got rumors on the way, Jess. Yes, we do. The Breakfast Club lets Natalie Nunn lie again on Jess. Damn. Damn. Mm. You're coming in hot. <laughs> All right. We'll get to it next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. All right. Yeah. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne, the guy, Jess Hilarious. We are the Breakfast yes, Club. And let's get to Jess with the mess. News is real. News, News is real. real. Jess Hilarious, Jess Robin Moore. Jess don't do no lying. This is the rumor report. I don't do that. Stop. It's Jess with the mess. And this is real. Allegedly. Breakfast Club. I know they know the business. Stop.
So the Breakfast Club allowed Natalie Nunn to come up here and lie on Just Hilarious. <laughs> That's not true. Oh, we boy. have audio. It is true. Red plate. Yeah. Just started off by saying that Tanisha was her favorite from Bad Girls Club and that um, I shouldn't be running Bad Girls Club over at Zeus. That's how it started. Then the second thing was when Krishan and Blueface's show came and, you know, my name's in the credits as an executive producer, she went on to say Natalie is exploiting Krishan and making all this money off of her and there's a whole thing on YouTube if you Google it. Like, she just went on a rant. Mm -hmm. And so, so I'm like, how am I exploiting her? Like, what? And like, you know, I the get, only I, thing I would correct Jess on is is not just you exploiting her; it's Lemmy too. Oh, first of all, I love Jess. She's great. Um, oh God, I, I have an issue with Jess. I don't have an I issue. I mean, I last time we saw I, her, I, I told her to get out of our section. Well, you guys were getting into it. I was trying to calm yeah, her down, okay. and I was like, "Hey, well, oh. you know, she." Who, I, Jess and Natalie? Yeah, she was yeah, randomly going, walked into our section they and they trying to grab up. our bottle and drink. Like, you were just talking shit. Jess, nah, Jess, like, what's up? Just talking shit. Who wants to smoke? Me. Wow, Jess, she kicked you out the sister, uh, her section? First of all, that's not what I got from that story. She is lying. What, what did you get from that story before I correct that? That you came in the section to see what's up because you're a troublemaker and that's you took her what, bottle I'm probably. Not, no, I did not, <laughs> you yo. took it on purpose. No, like, I'm going to drink I, this mine now. First what's of up? all, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would never. I don't even do that. I had my own section, which was sitting in front of them. We were right in front of the stage, and then Zeus was right behind us. What happened, this was at Tycoon Weekend, if, uh, 50s Weekend in Houston uh, last year. Um, baddies came through and two girls had walked through my section Jackie Long was escorting them in um, two of them walked through now they were drunk I did mm -hmm. tell the one girl don't walk through my section walk around it mm -hmm. so she mugged me and just kept walking but they little girls so I'm like I'm not tripping she, as long as she don't do nothing I just walk around so they had to come back out come back in mm -hmm. They walked through again. I mushed the girl, Jackie Long, like, yo, chill, don't, don't. I mushed her. She ran over there and told Natalie what happened. Mm -hmm. Like, Natalie was her father or something. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo, you don't do that. So Why you say, like, Natalie was her mother? Why you say, but, okay, okay, oh, I'm yeah, sorry, it could have been either one. I'm sorry. But so she ran over, over there, there like, like, no, I didn't even go over there. I saw that happen. Natalie looked. That's when she saw me. Bobby Lights, who I like, is he's cool. He came over and was like, Jazz, you want to take a shot with us? Want to take a shot? And I was like, yeah, whatever. That's cool. I wanted to go over there anyway. You, exactly. So I, well, all right, that's exactly. fine. Exactly. I went over there <laughs> and he was pouring me a section. I never had the bottle in my hand. She, He grabbed the bottle and he, he was pouring a, a whole section? He was pouring a shot. No. Oh, I went up and I'm finished. He was pouring a shot and Natalie in the back, hold up. Who's that? Don't know. She ain't no effort. She not drinking from my bottle. First of all, it was one bottle for 10 girls. So oh, it was like, it was only enough for one of y'all to take a swig one time anyway I'm not gonna do that but I did just come over there to get worked up so she what's up what's up the, the chair she was sitting in was very tight mm -hmm. so uh, she couldn't get up so she gave up and she never got up so I'm like what's up then and I walked past Bobby Lamel grabbed me like no 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 come on let's take a picture let's take not let's take a picture no he's like you need to calm down whatever whatever so he de-escalated the, the situation them and their security him and their security mm -hmm. and I went back to my section and that was it. We took the party outside. That was it. So I was absolutely right. You came to her section to see Yo, what's up because you nah, were a troublemaker. Nah, That's, she nah, she got nah. invited to drink and she I said, sure, invited. Bobby Lights, and I'll take a drink. She, she used that as an excuse. To, shut up. She used that as an no, excuse uh, to go over there because she wanted to go over there no, anyway. And whether Bobby was trying to be sneaky or trying to instigate something, I don't think so. He just wanted to come up and I took the invite. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. cool. And then that was it. I walked up in there like, what's up? But I never touched that bottle trying to drink it. Y'all ain't got no reason to have no issue. No, we don't have an issue. Especially I just don't particularly just care for her. Yeah, over that's you all. just critiquing the show. That's and that's it. yeah, and it's and Natalie. Yeah, I said that Tanisha is my favorite bad girl because she is my favorite bad girl. And yes, I did give you some flag about you exploiting the girl, Krishan. And I also did say, Lemmy, if mm -hmm. people don't like Mona Scott Young, they can't like Lamel. I agree. But that's it. That was it. That was all. Okay. Bow Wow admits he regrets missing prom in college due to fame. On Wednesday, Bow Wow took to his Instagram stories with a message about his desired experiences like going to prom, going to college, and joining a fraternity. Yo, this next line is crazy. According to the 36-year-old, people think he has it all. <laughs> but in reality, he just wants the simple things. I'm just like, it's funny. People think he has it all. No, we thought you had it all, but you started lying and then like the jet thing. And remember, yo, when he What's was problem, he was in front of the school Why? Why are you and doing he was like, he just like, going this morning. Why are you these, doing this to It's Chad these Mark? kids behind me. They don't even know it's me. <laughs> and acting, they didn't even care. Why are you doing this? You acting like you ain't never lost your mind in a scream talk. No, I no, I did. Loved Bow Wow. <laughs> loved him. I was, yes. Loved him. Was trying exactly. to look like him and everything. Oh, when, when he was little. Yeah, all right. Yo, he was having braids with the crinkly 
me back we coming out. Yes. Bow Wow was the first half up, half down person. Don't play, okay? But yeah, like what he was saying, I thought was interesting. You know, he said he just woke up thinking to myself, like, damn, I've never been to prom nor college. I want to pledge so bad. I wish I was a part of a fraternity. Y'all think I'm lucky because of my lifestyle, but I really want what y'all have. He was real sad about that. He missed things like that. I, um, get, I, get, I, get, I get what he's saying. saying. Yeah. yeah, he didn't get to have like a childhood, right. childhood because yeah. you know he, he misses the experience. Biz. He he probably goes out when they shut out the HBCUs in yeah. the college. He misses those experiences. Yeah. You know, he was a childhood star early. So absolutely, he, that's why Michael Jackson that. was put on. And I'm not comparing Michael Jackson to Bow Wow. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's why Michael Jackson would put on disguises and just want to go walk around a grocery store. Right, right, yeah. you know, right. Oh, wow, it. the grocery store. I never heard that one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but yeah, I mean, like he, he obviously think he, you know, he he misses something, but mm -hmm. I think he's gonna get to relive that with his kids. He got a son, he got a daughter, all right. that's coming up. He can li uh, literally live vicariously through his. But it's not too that. late now. He thirty six. He can go be normal now if he want to. Well, he I see DC college. He can't something. wrap it up right. That's where he should have went with Romeo. I don't know if he, he can still pledge, but he can still go he back still to pledge. college. No, he can oh, still pledge. He can still pledge. He can pledge. Bow Wow, you got the rest of your life to be normal. But he can go back to college now. He can go back to college. Yeah, he lives in Atlanta, so he can go to. What I'm saying. out there Morehouse, mm -hmm. Clark you, you can go do it You can still go experience that It's not okay. too late But he was just expressing Like how he, he feels like That was like a loss mm -hmm. And I definitely do get it so, All right Yeah Well that is your Just with the mess Because yes, remember Megan Thee Stallion Went back to college Yeah she Quavo's, was, yeah. Quavo's going back now yep. So he yep. can, he can go, can go go That's play That's amazing And you gotta be a Q Bow Wow You can't be nothing else Because you a dog <laughs> <laughs> nah Ain't that's what they do? Yeah they but he like, like a, that. he like a puppy He can't He can't go That's why you go he to college go. You'll be a no, dog No what about a camper? No I, ain't gonna, I like the camper You can't be a camper and a dog He's a dog He's not He's not a dog no His more. uncle's a dog Snoop we, I'm <laughs> talking about Go to commercial Ray Please Alright <laughs> When we come back Tesla and Figaro will be joining us It's The Breakfast Club Good morning <laughs> The Breakfast Club Your mornings will never be the same NFL is here. DraftKings Sportsbook is an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today and use code ENVY for a special offer when you sign up. That's code ENVY, E-N-V-Y, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ ENVY, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Of course, Jess Hilarious is here. And good morning, Tears. Good morning, DJ Envy. The Queen, Jess Hilarious, is here. Hey, and Charlemagne the God. Peace, Tess. Let's jump mm -hmm. right into it. Let's talk about this Texas student that was suspended over his hair. Mm. Yeah, a black Texas high school student has been suspended for more than a week because of his lock hairstyle. Uh, it violated the district's dress code. It could be a test of the new discrimination that they're banning these hairstyles across Texas. But Daryl George, he's a junior at Barbers Hill High School, received multiple disciplinary action about his hair. And so finally, uh, he refused to take it down. So they uh, gave him a suspension. Now, they said this is the same week that the Crown Act went into effect. Now, the Crown Act is a law prohibiting uh, discrimination based upon one's hair texture or protective hairstyles, such as locks and braids that went into effect. Shout out to one of my partners, Shirley's Kitchen Cabinet, that pushed the Crown Act to pass, which it did. Uh, but this did not violate the Crown Act because um, it says that this particular violation was because male students, uh, their hair cannot extend below the eyebrows or below the ear lobe. So uh, it's not in violation of the Crown Act, uh, but it is in violation of this policy. So the question now is, should there be amendments to the to the Crown Act uh, to cover uh, men and their hair going below, you know, their eyebrows or below their ear lobes? Hmm. I can't believe we're still having this conversation in 2023 about yeah. people's hair. Yeah. That's crazy to me. Yep. We we are still having this conversation in 2023. And as a side note, I had to have the conversation as well um, with my, my daughter, you know, when she was cheering. And the requirements, I think I mentioned this before, the requirements of how your hair has to be, you know, in a very high ponytail. And a lot of the, the black girls, you know, had braids or, you know, had different styles that you just couldn't pull up. And she said, well, you know, that's the standard. And I would have to ask, well, what is the standard based upon? Whose hair is it based upon? So this is a real thing uh, that happens in these high schools, real things that happen uh, to these young men, uh, football players and uh, people that play basketball that have different, you know, natural hairstyles that, yes, they still are, are fighting this at schools across the country for sure particularly in texas yeah i know uh even with uh logan in school i remember when he had corn rolls and they had a problem with his corn rolls when he when he first went to school mm -hmm. uh we didn't take him out though you know it, it was what it was but uh this is crazy I, i'm still surprised we're having this conversation about hair yeah 
But what did they say when you said they had problems? Was it against the uniform or? They said it was against the uniform. Um, there was a couple of things, but we, we said, he, you know, this is his hairstyle. He wants to wear his hairstyle like that. You know, some of these kids have stupid looking, what's the the, the mullet looking things. I said, I find that mm-hmm. offensive. Those mullets seem, seem offensive to me. I don't like the way they look. Um, mm-hmm. And... They you fi- can't tell him you can't. A mullet You gonna get sued Your bro. mullet is offending you, 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 can't tell, you can't tell him that uh, You don't like it You don't like the way it looks Why can't I? They said they don't like The way my son's cornrows look Yeah but it, it's because Oh they said, it's, said They, they, they wanted him to cut it Because of the looks Well because of I, They said it was against Policy But, yeah. but well, what's the policy? If, the, if that school right. told your son They don't They want you to cut it Because they don't like, like The way it looks You got a huge lawsuit No well they said policy But what policy uh, is it? Like, well, what, I don't know right. well, yeah. What policy is that? Words matter You what, say I don't like The way it looks but I said I don't like the way a mullet looks. I, yeah, I get you offensive can't, every time I see a mullet. Yeah, that's not yeah. A, that's not a good enough. And what, and what offends you about a mullet? I'm just joking. I'm I just don't like it. It looks stupid yeah. as hell to me. That's all. That's all. <laughs> it looks real suspicious. Yeah, it looks real suspicious. <laughs> yeah, it's a it looks suspicious a mullet. It's, yeah. It's that's different. the kind of stuff that you get uh, multi million dollar lawsuits from if a school say that. Mm-hmm. School say, oh, he looks suspicious. I don't like his cornrows. They look suspicious. <laughs> they look suspicious. Mm-hmm. I don't like the way they look. I want him to cut them. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's basically what, what they're saying. I mean, when they're saying we don't like it, like right. why? It's like why? You right. know, what 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 is the standard of beauty that you guys are you know holding it to? I had a real big thing with, like I said, with my daughter's cheerleading mm-hmm. uh, coach about it because what standard of beauty are you? Why not a, a regular ponytail should be just fine? Why does yeah. it have to be a high high ponytail? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Just, you know, as a woman, you may not be unless your hair is in braids all throughout the yeah. year, which my daughter's hair was in braids. But I'm I don't I shouldn't have to keep her hair in braids all year long to meet this standard of beauty that you think is only appropriate for cheerleaders what yeah. is that based upon it certainly was not including uh black people for sure yeah, you, you, i don't see how you can include that as a policy of your company you know what i'm saying yeah. because hair is yep. hair it's well, not like yeah. it's not even like clothing yep, like it's was, very broad yeah. yeah but let me ask you a question you know with, with you know girls that I, I don't know about cheerleading but my my girls do dance they have to wear their hair in a in a pony a, a high point. Yeah. It's like they have to and all the girls wear it like that. You know what I mean? So but yeah. the thing is the different pump. textures, different lengths, different, you know. Right. What, what mm-hmm. if somebody can't put their hair up because right there was enough. one little girl that couldn't put it up it's not it wasn't the issue about the ponytail mm-hmm. it's the high ponytail mm-hmm. they want the ponytail to be like like just show them because i can't like show them this yeah they like damn it up, up here no none of us and like so, the struggle ponytail now see now we can all <laughs> right. say that right we don't like the so struggle the, ponytail yeah some of the girls their hair can't go up that way everybody don't want to put weave in their hair or yeah. the only way it was working is if like i said you keep braids Big like, yeah, like, big no, plan. no, no, please. You cannot come here with that struggle for it. <laughs> please, it's against company policy. Yo, remember I had one? Yes, I, had I do. Yeah, oh, my I goodness, knew I do. coming. But I you was, was at home, coming. though. Yeah, and I put it up there. Yeah, I went out, though. Why you took you, that picture, though? You went out somewhere with that? Because <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. That's when I was, you know what, I was just reckless. Yeah, I've always pointed that. I'm like, why did you just take this picture? Why, why, <laughs> I why, did it. Why, why, why you post it? I don't know. I just put it out there. I was like, man, I'm me. Like, that's what you get. That's what you get. That's right. All right. They got a lot of policies though. Like even with my daughter Chili, like she can't have, she can't wear certain earrings because she got certain piercings. And yeah, she can't wear yeah. certain earrings at certain times, stuff like that. But I don't yeah, think well, the earrings I, I think is all fine. That's different than hair. Yeah, that's yeah. very different. Yeah, it's so totally different. Than, yeah, and again, I, she shouldn't have to wear braids. We wear braids, but if you wear braids all the time throughout the year, it, it can cause breakage in the hair. You know, it can damage yeah. my daughter's hair. So I shouldn't have to be forced. A, a regular ponytail should be just fine. So mm-hmm. that was a, a real fight, and we, we won thankfully. But it's it's definitely a low level discrimination. All right. Well, that is front page news. Thank you, Tiz. Oh, absolutely. And make sure you subscribe to Tesla Figueroa's podcast, The Straight Shot, No Chaser Podcast, on the Black Effect iHeartRadio Podcast Network, and follow at Tesla Figueroa on all social media platforms. And Tez, I know, I know you're a, a huge Spirit Airline person. I just want to tell you that uh, two former Delta Airline workers are on trial for stealing 250000 in cash before it was wow. on JFK. So. I might well, need thank to. you for holding that accountability for Delta. You gonna stop saying spirit? You know damn well in Southwest. By the way, I, <laughs> I took my put. I took my picture yesterday on Instagram. Come follow me at Tesla Figaro with me on Southwest. And when you come follow me, stop saying she don't look like I thought she would look. I don't know what voices are supposed to look like, but oh my god, Jesus! I get that every day, Jess. Oh my god! <laughs> All right. What does that mean? What is it? What is a voice supposed to sound like? I don't know. <laughs> I I don't know what they say. I don't know why they, they just say. That. They just always say that you don't look like I thought you would look. That's crazy. Whatever that means. Well, when we come back, Cedric the Entertainer will be joining us. Comedian, actor, and so much more. He has a new book called Flipping Boxcars. And we're going to kick it with him when we come back. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club on BET. The Breakfast Club.
doing well. Uh, so I'm excited, man. Always great to be in the city. It was so much going on. It was a lot. I was trying to, you know how you keep trying to go home and everybody call you like, hey, man, just stop through here. And come through like, here. Oh, come through here. Puff, two, I think, at a birthday party two, two, last year. yeah. How yeah. many outfits you bring with you, Cedric? Because you stay yeah. clean. I, 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 this was, I had to be very specific on this, but I, got, I think I brought about six outfits. And uh, you know, and then I only wore four of them, so I got so I get I go home with two outfits that I could just yeah finish the week out with on some like oh I'm still fresh. Six outfits for how many days though? Three days. Damn. Jesus Christ. Yeah, but you like you like you're appearing on TV and stuff, so you yeah, don't okay. really know like. All right, I wore that all day, and then if I go out tonight, I don't want people to go like, I saw you this morning, that was the night you got the same shirt on. Yeah. <laughs> like, maybe, but you know what I mean? Gotcha. I don't, have to, I don't have to do it like, like, girls really have to change a lot, you know what I mean? But, you know, guys, we're not really required to, like, flip our outfits that much, but nowadays it is a fashion world, right? Everybody mm -hmm. kind of wants to see what the drip is, yeah. Mm -hmm. They see you all the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, you got the Flipping Boxcars book out, man, and yeah, I man. love that you flexing different creative muscles, writing fiction. Novels, yeah, talk man. to us about flipping box cars. What made you want to write a fiction novel? You know, you know, I was, you know, really hearing stories about my grandfather, but you know, he had passed before I was even born. Mm -hmm. So you know, like we will hear things about our relatives, and then you start to get the lore of the family story, and that's what I did. Like I started to like really fictionalize what his life was like, mm -hmm. and so you know, he was. Uh, these were real things, you know, mm -hmm. that I heard from my mother and my uncles that you know he was a businessman. Uh, you know, he was like a you know the the, the facto mayor of the black side of town this little small town and then you know but at night he was a bootlegger and a gambler and a hustler and he always being creative and so I just kind of put those two worlds together to show them being like this loving grand, this loving father and husband and then he had to go and do what he had to do to make you know make his dreams come true so mm -hmm. he gets caught up in a caper it's like a crime caper where he's got to like, take this bootleg liquor from a train so that's the boxcar trains and then he does the dice with the the two sixes as a box cars too, so that's why he flipping box cars. Well, that's the most important thing about the book, right? The dynamic, because that is the black struggle in a lot of ways. The fact that, yeah, I'm a family man and yeah. I'm trying to do all of this for my family, but I gotta go out there and get it by any means necessary. Sometimes, don't make me a bad person. That's right. Yeah. I mean, we all, you know, as, especially black men, we kind of always relegated to that. I mean, even when we think about the people like make it in the music business or whatever, most of them have that other past where they yeah. was like street dudes, mm -hmm. but we never saw them as that way like mm -hmm. we just appreciate that they are great artists and and they did what they got to do and so you think about post world war ii pre-civil rights you know black man that's what I, I i love the story is that he had traveled he'd been in the world and then you come back to a pre-civil rights america you just can't be put back in the same box you know once you left you can't tell me i can't come through the front door bro i've been living in france for six months you mm -hmm. know i've been mm -hmm. doing this we've been fighting in the war for the whole country you know tell me i gotta go through the back like i don't you know so these kind of guys they had that will to want to want to be great without but being relegated to the, the racism of the time you know mm -hmm. now did you write this during the pandemic because yeah. where do you have time and when <laughs> do you have time to write a, a, a book yeah, yeah, that's when it got. That's when it started for sure. It took like two years. We did that in, uh, yeah, started it in late 2019, and then you know went through the, all the drafts, and then you know then you time it out when you want to release it. So. And what gave you the idea to do it? Because it's like between comedy yeah. at the time, writing, acting, and everything that you were doing. When did you say, you know what, it's time for a book? Was it sitting at home doing nothing? It was like, yeah, I got, I got something to do. Yeah, you know the thing was is that you know like I've been developing TV shows for we we've been producing a lot of shows, my shows, the Johnson. On, on bounce and so I was developing this as a TV idea when I first started mm -hmm. and so you know when you started thinking about like then we had the opportunity to write a book and I was like oh that'd be so much m more fun to have that long form mm -hmm. develop the characters out not to think about it in episodic ways where you gotta like end the episode and then take you to the next here I just introduce you to the characters let the world live and then Hopefully people love it. Like even the way I ended, it's got like three cliffhangers. It's definitely a cliffhanger. So it's like you know you definitely want people to be like, what happened to the story? So you know I loving it. I liken it to uh, Walter Mosley. There's you know the Easy Rollins characters, mm -hmm. the Devil in the Blue Dress. I mm -hmm. love that world, and that's what we you know I just kind of try to emulate that feel. That's what it was. When it comes to storytelling for you, what's the best way to tell a story? Stand up, movies, TV, or uh, writing fictional novel? 
You know, I mean, this book was really a great experience. I've never really, you know, done a, a fictional novel. And I mean, the idea and what it took and the way it turned out, in my opinion, I like love this book. I love the process. I love telling people, you know, about it. Even when I did the audio book, that's when I really recognized like, damn, this, this book dope. Like mm -hmm. I was because I had to, you know, hear it back for the first time myself. And then uh, last night over in Newark, these kids, they took an excerpt and, and acted it out like on stage. Mm -hmm. That also brought to life that was something very unique like they made a stage play out of a out of an excerpt about the book so you know I, I want I think I want to do stuff like that when I'm as I'm promoting it it's get people to understand like what the book is really all about so we ain't got great readers you know anymore people love their yeah. audio books you know mm -hmm. which is dope I, I think but I definitely want to encourage people to go and read this and check it out it's, it's a it's cool adventure tells a great story you follow it characters are rich it's interesting how was the strike affecting you? Because, I mean, I'm sure you had plans for this to turn into a movie yeah. or, a, you know, a sitcom or something like that. So how was that, with everything going on, affecting you and your mental and, you know, because you've been working since yeah. you, were, you were young. Yeah, like, yep, a long time, man. But, you know, I mean, the strike has is, is, is just really gotten way longer than what we think. And it's got, it got really real for us the other day because they, like, start pulling everybody production deals. So the things that we used to have, mm -hmm. they shut all that down the other day. So it's one thing to, like, not have work in another thing to now not be able to play your employees like people like they just really just shut it all down and so you know and you got people that's been with you working you love them you don't you got to figure out their well-being now so you know that those things became really real and I think that you know I don't know all the, the issues I, just, I do know that it's not enough transparency on the money side like you know we don't get to know what these companies make especially the streamers and so you know the the valuations of how they pay you what who who's hot who's not is based off their own algorithms that they don't have to share so that becomes a, you know it becomes a challenge man when you're trying to negotiate and somebody can basically tell you what you're worth you do, you, you can't even figure out what you're worth they just tell you what you're worth you think you, know? you think Hollywood would ever rebound from, from all this because you got like you said actors that gonna have to do something else now because they gotta pay their bills and it's, it hasn't been 10 days it hasn't been a month we're looking at a you know a couple yeah, of months man, now and like it's, six almost yeah. especially for the writers yeah I think that it'll, it'll, it'll it's, it's a resilient business. I mean, you know, we've been through strikes before, but I was saying, I was saying to somebody, I re re recognize that really entertainment is one of our our greatest exports as as a country in the United States. That's what we give the world. We we don't make nothing no more. We don't do steel and you know textiles. We sell entertainment movies big blockbuster movies so it's a huge business that's not gonna go away they just got to figure out again how you share how you let creatives and people who have IP they come in with ideas that they bring to the table and then y'all say alright let me give you this one check and then peace you out and with AI too that was the other thing you know like the idea that I can like take your intellectual property your idea your identity they want to take people's identities and duplicate them in AI and be like, I appreciate you. Thank you. You know, move on. Like, that's cold-blooded. Mm -hmm. You know, these things have to be resolved. And, you know, I guess they really, they're much harder than they sound. Like, people, you know, feel like, and, and just give it up. But mm -hmm. I guess if you was on the other side and you didn't have to pay nine people to write a script, you know, then you're not going to pay nine people. Right. You're going to pay one and then put that computer on it. Your situation unique, though, because you can just go back on the road. Yeah, I mean, stand up is great too, but you know, so I, I mean, I love the opportunity that you know I got a live, you know, a live business. So that's dope. You know, you gotta that's a that's a part of the uh, like the whole makeup. Of, it's you got to keep stand up alive. You know, a lot of a lot of uh, people when they get big, they stop doing that as a craft. But I love to go out, man. We we had a we had a fun tour that we ended in May. Then you get out the way of all the music acts like you know stand ups. We don't we don't we don't even try when Beyonce them out there. You like <laughs> <laughs> they be like Beyonce about to be on tour. You like yes ma'am. Right, cool. Like See fall you in the back. Fall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Taylor, Drake, all the music acts. They like they tell you they tear you up, boy. You like I ain't going out there with them. All right, we got more with Cedric the Entertainer. When we come back, don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Cedric the Entertainer. He has a new book that's out right now. Charlemagne? Now, the book, right? Flipping Box Cars. 
What life lessons can somebody learn from rolling dice? Oh, man. Now, from rolling dice, really, really it is, you know, I think that the idea of rolling dice is, is the experiment of looking at what's your chances to actually accomplish what this goal that you that you want. Right? And it's, it is it's, it's a stroke of luck, but, you know, people love to play those, those angles, the numbers, the chances, and they bet against themselves, against the others. They bet against the table at times. And sometimes in life, I think we got to make those kind of challenges. It's like writing a novel is something that I've never done before but you know as a person that's like a creative I wasn't gonna like tell myself I couldn't do it mm-hmm. so I tried it right mm-hmm. and then you know with the opportunity that it came out uh, successful then that's uh, you know we'll see what the numbers do but we're doing good man we, we, we're killing it on Amazon and you know and wherever you can buy books y'all go out and get that today go get that flipping box yeah not just luck because you start every chapter with something right so it's a easy way it's a rolling four six eight or ten with any combination except for double yeah so that is something that's basically setting up what you see happen in the chapter yeah right you have the the idea of what he's doing we use gambling terms I got a glossary in there mm-hmm. but we use these gambling terms and then basically kind of set you up you know, like you said, that little that little headliner is like, what's this this whole chapter is going to mm-hmm. entail? You know, so who taught going. you how to gamble? I, you know, I'm from that get on the knees in the lunchroom yeah, with the wall, yeah. like you know, hitting told some older cousins, my cousin Calvin, cousin Mark, and you know, my cousin Stan. I think about them all. Of them that was. You know, that was the that was the cousins you went to live with in the hood and they just was, everything was crazy. Fun. And then um but you know, I don't gamble much. Like as I got older, it was like one of those things I just like to make my money. I don't I don't really take chances with my money like that. I'll gamble with my boys. Like, you know, when they in Vegas and we out there and like just everybody having a good time, that's the only time I do it. But I'm not one to walk past the table and like, yo, let me just drop a thousand or two, mm-hmm. you know. I got grand on there. I ain't doing that. I was going to ask, you know, speaking to your, your family about your grandfather, do you see traits in yourself that they tell you that was in your grandfather as well? Yeah, that was, I mean, that was one of the big motivations because you do get that. Like I say, I never had a chance to meet him, but, you know, like wearing the hats and the suits, and my, you know, my mother would tell me, like, well, you remind me of my daddy right now. Like, you know, and then, of course, you, we get that, you know, you might have a laugh or the way you smile or smirk. Mm-hmm. People would tell you, like, you look just like so-and-so. And so, you know, I'd say that in the acknowledgments, man, that I really encourage people to go back and start talking to their elders and the older people in their family because you'll find out a lot about your own self, you know, because, you know, like the fact that he was such an entrepreneur and he was a person that really wanted to see himself in a bigger life, you know, but, you know, was, you know, kind of like. You know, sub- submerged by the times. I feel like I got that spirit. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know where it came from, but ever since I was a teenager, I never wanted to be like a person that had a job. Like, I was like, I want to, I got to figure out how to hustle it. You know, I wasn't no street dude, but, you know, I still was, like trying to sell shades to people. Mm-hmm. And, you shades. know, yeah, I mean, sunglasses. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. You, you find out that hustle. You get the sunglasses on the low at one place, and then you go and try to sell them to the people at the park when they out riding around. Like, yeah, I got these Gucci. Jeez, they not really, but they look like. <laughs> do, do you feel like you know or understand your grandfather more? You know, I mean, through, you know, you know, it, you know in, 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 a little bit for sure. Mm-hmm. But it, it is a fictional tale, so you know, I only had a few stories. You know, he definitely was, you know, from a generation where he didn't have a lot of friend groups left. You know, so mainly my uncle. You know, my mom had passed in 2015, but before then, a lot of her stories. But, you know, to get, you know, when I started developing this book, it was mainly like close relatives and they were they were teenagers and kids when he was doing his thing. Mm-hmm. So but, but my Uncle Mel, he actually, you know, got to the age where he can go and hang with his father. So he'd be at the gambling house in the mm-hmm. back, you know, or having to run errands for people. So, you know, he was talking about that scene in Harlem Nights with a knock on the door. He was like, that kind of stuff was my, was my life. Mm-hmm. You know, I had to come in and knock on the door. And my daddy need this. And mama need that. I leave, you know. I was going to ask with the King of Comedy such a special tour right when it came out and everybody yeah. was so excited people always ask who would be the new Kings of Comedy if you had to name four new comedians that you could see that new? you love like new new or just people that's hot I mean the thing is I mean the thing is I mean the idea of the Kings of Comedy these were the you know it was like the guys that was at the top of their game at that time I mean yeah. right now that same group probably still uh, you know Kevin mm-hmm. Chappelle Rock 
uh, me. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. You fell with King of Comedy. Yeah, no, nah, but you know, no, nah, but you I, know. I'm talking to Jess Hilarious last night. She was like, man, I want to be there for Cedric, man. He's I the know, king of I comedy. Thought, she I like, thought she was going to be here. I love Jess, man. Mm-hmm. That we, we, she one of these people that, like, again, these new voices that came on and just really dynamic and, you know, got our own lane. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I, was, I was looking forward to her being here. That she was, wanted was, to meet you bad. She was like, I, I never met him. He's the king wow. of comedy. I got to meet Cedric. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, no doubt that. You know, but I, but you know, it's a lot of you know. I I love, love Dion Cole. Like I think he definitely mm-hmm. one of these people popping. this like Carlos Miller, DC. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a lot of cats out here that smoke. Roy Woods Jr. I love Roy Woods. Mm-hmm. I think I think people that's been around a long time that still need to get they they light. Mm-hmm. You know, but it's it's but comedy is gonna be one of those things too that there's so many specials that sometimes they don't feel special no more. You that's know right. what I'm saying? So I don't know exactly how that's you know how we gonna resolve that. And you know we we hear a lot of comedy, you know, not the way like in you know when we came up, Def Jam was so uniquely special. Being on the Apollo was uniquely special, and then but now you know you got Netflix and it's just. A special, you just flip through there and be like, oh, you know, dude had a special right here. So you, you find you find comedy just being so readily available that it's too regular. It's not an event. Yeah, exactly. There's no event going on. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the thing. But I mean, but you know, like that that live though, that's that's still a great place. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? Like when you go live and you see people that can hit that stage and turn it up. You know, I think that's totally different because when you're shooting a special, you also in your mind try to get too fly you know what right. I'm saying you didn't change your outfit you cause you thinking about, you thinking about being on TV you not really doing it like when, when you're going up there mobbing in the dojo you know what I'm saying so, oh you know Chico Chico reminds me of you yeah, oh, Chico that's my guy, Chico mm-hmm. Bean. That's my other guy, man. I yeah, love he reminds me, like, the way, you, the, even the, y'all mannerisms, the yeah. way y'all move, talk, the way y'all dress. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. We had, you know, we did a show a couple years ago. That was the first time I was with him, and I was just realized, like, man, all them all them guys, like, Holy hella talented. Up. Yeah, that Chico, yeah, he definitely one of them guys, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You ever look back at, at some of the comedy back then and be like, damn, we could never say that now? Sometimes I go back, listen to old music. I show y'all uh, in an old commercial, and I'm like, I, I can't even believe they played this commercial on air. But you know what I mean? Could you ever look back at that and are you ever scared Man. doing comedy now? It was so funny, my, my, my partner right, my manager, we was doing he he hit me with a joke I used to do a long time ago and it was just like it was the subtle callback to a joke that I was like, Dog, you can't even tell that joke right now. And I'm not I don't never see myself as no person that's like got like politically incorrect jokes where I'm out like really trying to be rude to mm-hmm. people. But you know, the times have changed. Uh Bernie Max, you know, we you know, his passing has been like a fifteen, 15 years we've been yeah. dealing with that. We talking about Kings of Comedy, like hit that whole set. <laughs> You can't, you can't do milk and cookies. You right, can't right. do milk and cookies. Especially the setup to it. Right, right. By the time, like, I was like, yo, like, that, and that's so brilliant. Like, we loved, like, his delivery and, uh, like, the kind of earnest honesty in, in that. But you can't even, nah, man. So that's crazy. It's a slippery slope, you know, because, you know, especially when you're creative, you like trying to just say stuff. Sometimes you just letting it come out, mm-hmm. you know, and then, you know, you know, you can actually just very easily be in a pothole and be like, man, I ain't really mean it that way. You know, then people go on the apology tour or try to act like That's they right. didn't. <laughs> <laughs> try to act like, they, yeah, you know, no, nah, then should be trying to fix it with all that, like, like you got caught by your girl. Like, no, nah, I'm just saying, like, for real, though, like, you need to understand, like, what I was saying, I didn't mean. Oh, they say, I'm doing the work. Way. Yeah, I'm, I'm working hard on myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, just some terms you learn from them classes. Passes they sent you to. <laughs> you got the. <laughs> I'm doing the work. All right, we got more with Subject the Entertainer when we come back. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Everybody, it's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Cedric the Entertainer. His new book, Flipping Box Cars, is out right now. Charlemagne? You say you don't gamble, right? So was it a bad experience you had rolling dice back in the day? Oh, man. You know what? Most of the times it's a bad experience. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> most of the times, most of the times it's just like you know, hey, here you go, here's some money. 
You know, you get to play for a little bit. I had some great roles. You know, you you get you start playing with gamblers, and you recognize like, oh, I can't even keep up. Like, mm-hmm. you know, what I'm saying, you go in there, like, I can't play like that. But it was just one of these things that for me, the odds and put my money on something that felt like I'm just waiting on a whim. You know, I do that on the lottery tickets when it's a being. That's it. I'm gonna do that twenty dollars at a time. That's right. And if I hit Quick a peak. billion, yeah, then I'm good. But if I don't, then it's twenty dollars. But I'm not you ready to throw five grand on the on the craps table. Mm-hmm. That's not me, man. How, how many names did you have to change to protect? the guilty in this book oh man <laughs> a lot a lot I definitely ch- I kept I kept my grandfather and then pretty much and my grandmother's name mm-hmm. but then everybody else I kind of changed you know and especially like other relatives that you know in there I, I even like changed who they were because I have other relatives in here that are represented, but that's not what their personalities were. I just needed to change and get some texture and make characters feel different. But, you know, even the character that plays his brother-in-law in, in real life, they was they was two peas in a pod. Mm-hmm. And so, but I couldn't make, they would have felt like the same person in the book. So I made him something totally different. Now, his family going to be coming to you, asking you for money? Like, you, of you, course. You wrote this about granddaddy? Yeah. You, you never know, even met him, Cedric. Where the money? You know, I mean, it's one of these things that, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> it's funny that, yeah. But it is like a, it is a family thing. Luckily for me, like, my sister was rocking with me the mm-hmm. whole time. Mm-hmm. And she's like that protector of me. Like, if anybody come for me, my sister going to hold it down. She's like, nah, I'll school back, you know. So, but no, normally it says, you know, this, this was a creative process. This was something that me having an idea is. It's not about the family per se. Mm-hmm. It's a story, but it was like this was an opportunity that I had. And so I'll try to take care of people though. Like my uncle who helped me like a lot mm-hmm. and make sure that he get get you know, get some stuff off this book. My sister, people who like really helped me. I you know, I I think that that's uh you know, it's it's only fair to make sure that they get, you know, know that they love, Absolutely. get acknowledgments and not just acknowledgement in the book, but you know, monetarily too. But you know so, how to say no. Cause you've been getting money. Yeah, no. Nah, you've been yeah. doing well for a long time. No, yeah, I definitely know how to say no. Like I can say nah. Like nah. I, I go past no. <laughs> nah. <laughs> that's what you, that's what is emphatic. You like, oh, yeah. uh, okay. But let me nah. You know, but yeah. but no. <laughs> but definitely, you know, like it is one of those things where, you know, I, I used to have like a whole fund for the family. It was a very specific number. Really? Every year you put it in there, that's what's over there. So How much was it? If you don't mind Twenty five grand. Every year, okay. but if people can get it, you know, like they would, but they have to deal with my sister, so like you had to figure it out. But oh, that's smart. Yeah, but but twenty five grand, whatever it is, you can go there, you can qualify for it, and not all that was. Well, I mean, because you late, you late, you late, you late, no no, yeah, yeah, it wasn't no, you know, I ain't going for the nonsense, like yeah. like you like I want to go to Beyonce's head, you know, let me get like nine hundred dollars. Yeah. You're not getting it for that, but you know, you late, you need school money, you got this, you got you got you gonna lose the house, you know. You can come in there and get that money, like some of it. Not all of, not one person get all of it either. When did it stop? I don't even remember, man. But I just one day I just one year it was just over. He's like, like, I ain't doing this no more. Yeah, one year I was just like, I'm good. Uh, people heard one too many nas, and they knew not to ask you no more. Well, you know, and I think you know, I think it started getting to the point where people wanted the bigger, bigger checks. You know, some people just come in and literally felt like the whole twenty five was theirs. You know, you get certain relatives that they they closer to you and they just come and they want they don't even want to be in the group no more. They like, yo, I got my own twenty five. You know, you do that for them, but you know, pay pay for my house. Oh, they like, see you growing. They be like, I see you on CBS. Yeah, boy. boy that's cool. <laughs> Let me hold something. Yeah, you seen them new? You seen them new trucks, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I did. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, is dead. Yeah, you wait for you to offer yeah, something. Give you dude, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, and they ain't even that much. Yeah. They ain't even that much. Yeah. But now, nah, but now, nah, nah. put the tires on there and stuff. My, 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 my car just broke down too. Yeah, cause that's like, wow. <laughs> Kids gotta walk to yeah, school. That's yeah. crazy. You know that's saying? crazy. Yeah, yeah. I pray for you. <laughs> yeah, no, they, they gonna work it, man. <laughs> well, Seth the Entertainer's yeah, new book, up. Flipping Box Cars, is out right now. Make sure you pick it up. Yeah, we right. appreciate you that. for joining Always, us. Always, man. Much love, y'all. It's Cedric the Entertainer's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. I holla. Pay me what you owe me. You think you're Rihanna? Act like you forgot. <laughs> Better have my. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV, Charlemagne the God, Jess Hilarious. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get to Jess with the mess. News is real. News is real. Jess Hilarious, Jessica Robin Moore. Jess don't do no lying. This is the rumor report. 
I don't do that. Stop. It's just for the mess. I miss it. On the Breakfast Club. I know they know the difference. Who put us back? Sierra laughs hysterically about co-parenting with ex-future. So she recently sat down with Shade Room's Thimby and uh, they asked her, so how was your co-parenting relationship with future? And this is what the artist said. And then my, my last question on this, like, what is uh, co-parenting like for you guys? Jesus. <laughs> 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 Awesome. <laughs> they still laughing. Yeah. That was the answer. You're awesome. Future in the vocal booth right now. <laughs> Metro Boomer got a beat queued up for Future right now. Yo. Okay. Everybody about to get it. Oh. All right. Definitely it's Russell. Russell, 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 Russell about to get it. Yeah. Everybody about, about to get, get a bar too. And that's, I, I'm glad that she can laugh about it now though. That's that's amazing. Um. Uh. I I, I don't know. I to me, I feel like. She said all that she needed to say. Us women understood exactly what that was. Oh, us men understood it too? Oh, you understood it too? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. That's actually worse than saying something. Than saying anything. Mm -hmm. But like, I, it's great though. No, he can never say she said anything though. Damn. So what is he going to be writing about? He going to sample He gonna sample her laughing. Her laughing. Yep. Yep. And yep. had to pay her. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. Yep. <laughs> Give me something for it. Kelly Price defends Tiana Taylor after reports of Iman Shumpert and fidelity allegations. I read that real good. Let me read that again because that, that rolled off my tongue like that. There you uh, go. Yeah, no. She was Let practicing for 10 minutes, y'all. Kelly Price, all right, don't matter. <laughs> Kelly Price defends Tiana Taylor after reports of Iman Shumpert and Philadelphia. <laughs> 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 You should have let it go. You had it. God humbled you real quick. Infidelity allegations. God yeah, that said you was can't good. have it all. Off, so we're going to edit the second one out. That's all. God <laughs> said you can't have it all, Jess. All right? <laughs> so uh, this is pretty interesting. We have audio of what Kelly Price was saying when she was jumping to Tiana Taylor's defense. She's not a side piece. She's not a side hoe. She's a wife. They have a family. They have a home. They own businesses together. If anything is worth fighting for. It is your family, especially if it can be saved. Mm -hmm. I just don't understand why wives get attacked so bad and sides get praised. She's a beautiful woman. She's incredibly talented. Why say she's dependent? Why say she's one of these dumb black women that's going to always fight for black men no matter what the hell they're doing? Mm. Isn't that what we're supposed to be doing? Mm. So supposed to fight for them because guess what every day that they leave the house the whole world is against them they should have peace when they come home when they mess up they should be held accountable but that ain't our business how about that hey i'll tell you this mm. i have no idea who or what kelly price is talking about <laughs> is he even talking yeah, about i was gonna say where did that come I, from i don't, I don't know what she talk, i don't know nothing about this rumor she discussing okay what so happened? so kelly price went on ig live to defend tiana taylor against a blogger who went in on tiana after um Finding out about Iman cheating or whatever. Allegedly. Uh, allegedly. Now, I don't know who the blogger is. Um, and I'm not going to say who I think it was because that's not what I did. But um, she claimed that the the blogger had called Tiana a side piece for coming to defense of her family. Now, I see that a lot. I do see when, when um, husbands get caught in the headlines or whatever. A lot of women, they... They will say, oh, leave him, leave him, leave him. Oh, girl, you better than that. Leave him, leave him. I never really see anybody egging nobody on to fix their marriage. I think that's mm -hmm. what Kelly Price is kind of getting at. Okay. And she may have been the only person to see this blog or talk about Tiana because I didn't even see it. I didn't even hear this story. Never I never heard it, never seen it. I didn't hear it. I think either. sometimes you bring attention to things that, yeah, that don't need attention. It, yeah, because <laughs> I, I didn't know. And, and that, honestly, that's what I'm doing bringing attention to you, it you are, and I are. didn't even yep. know yeah you're right you I, yeah. is Kelly Tiana yeah. aunt godmother like what's, what's nah what's, nah but I, I tell you what she can't be making no remarks like that after she made a song like As We Lay mm. if anything you inspired this man to cheat Kelly Price did As We Lay she, As We Lay she, oh she remade it no, no yeah yeah she remade it she okay. killed it all right. That was one of her best best songs. You are, it is not hers, Jesus. but that's a good song. Uh, maybe we need Tyrese. I think maybe yeah, Tiana, yo, you stupid, Tiana yo, you stupid, and Iman. Yo, you stupid. Tiana and Iman needs Tyrese. That's what that is. You stupid. I don't Who like the hell team. would use <laughs> Tyrese as a marriage counselor? What kind of idiot <laughs> would use Tyrese as a marriage counselor? Rashawn and Gia. Oh shoot! I forgot. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I forgot. All right, no. Damn! I forgot. All right, all right. Moving Damn, on. Jeff. Moving on. Damn! I forgot. Moving on. Sorry. I forgot. Watch your mouth. <laughs> I forgot. I didn't know. Before we box it. Oh yeah, I'm about to box your mouth. <laughs>
I don't want All your right. box nowhere near my mouth. Oh, hopefully not at the, You tried to box Tyrese. I don't want you box his. You, you should box man. his first. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right, listen. Moving on. Last R. story. Tanache addresses her song with R. Kelly. Uh, so, Tanache was on Zach Sang show. Who talked about her song with R. About, Kelly? I, know, I, I don't know, but she said she was embarrassed about Do we have audio for that? Attached okay. to things that felt labely. Mm-hmm. Would you put in that category the songs you did with R. Kelly and Chris Brown? Oh, <laughs> You think I wanted? <laughs> I, I literally blo- I block out that R. Kelly song from my mind. I forget that that even exists. That is so embarrassing. And I think the public perceives it as you doing that willingly yeah. and not understanding that like there's you lack a lot of control in that situation. Oh yeah, of course, yeah, you do. And especially when it comes to singles, like for example, that song with with Chris. We all wanted it to be like this big moment, this big single. So I feel like in their mind, they were like, you need the support. And he was like their biggest artist they had on rhythmic radio at the time. And to me, I was like, well, this is a pop song. So I really don't feel like we should put Chris on it. Like that. I don't like that. That doesn't compute to me. But I don't know. Baby, Chris is pop. Chris is pop. Chris is R and B. Chris is hip hop. I, I yeah, think Chris, Chris is all that. He Absolutely. does all that. But um, I promise you, we still we never heard the song. None of us never, even knew about no. it until uh, you and Zach Sang started talking about it. I promise you. Absolute, um, salute to that guy for doing his research. Cause yeah, because she I, said <laughs> she, she tried to act like the song don't exist. I didn't know it existed. <laughs> DJ no Envy, idea. did you hear the song? Because you were DJ no, of all your years. I, I didn't hear this the song, but I just want to clear something up. Okay. There was a, a ill statement put out. Uh, for an interview that I did that okay. R. Kelly uh, I got flewed out by R. Kelly oh don't say oh like that because it didn't oh, happen like okay. that it All didn't right. happen like that All right. Cap. <laughs> hold on let me read the headline um, I saw that but I already knew the story because you told me about what, how that he, he flew him out he told me the good time he had what did he say what y'all hold wanted on. to do or what, y'all, said, what he was doing it said I got DJ Vlad TV DJ Envy I got flewed out by R. Kelly at 19 you can't get mad at, at people 19? for stories that you volunteered so what happened was don't they, don't you volunteered R. this Kelly, information R. Kelly at the time <laughs> like wanted to do an shit. R&B mixtape and I was doing mixtape okay. so, so he flew me out to Chicago to do okay. a mixtape he flew me out on a Friday Okay. then he left on me in a Friday. hotel by myself and didn't call me in when I was trying to get to the studio then Saturday oh. I woke up and I was like alright this is the day we're gonna do the mixtape how, how old was you? 19 I oh, know he was too old. <laughs> 19, I nah, ain't one day. So I thought this nigga was 17. How the hell we get here anyway? We talking about Tanache and Chris Oh, right, right, right. Oh, yeah, Tanache, yeah. So, uh, she wanted, was he, about 20. It'd be like telling that story. <laughs> I, I was with R. Kelly, y'all. I spent the weekend with R. Kelly. She was 20. I didn't. She was 20 around the time that she did the record with R. Kelly or whatever. But she's basically mm. saying that her labels made her do these songs or whatever. But I've never heard the song with her and Chris or the one with her and R. Kelly. So, baby, I promise you safe. You got it? You got it? Let's hear a little bit. Hey. My favorite song with Tinashe on that might be um, yeah. What is it? What's uh, your favorite Tinashe song? All my friends are wasted with uh, Chance the Rapper and uh, who's that group called Star uh, Starship Snake something. I don't know, but I like that on Kelly joint. All my friends are wasted. You never heard that? Nah. Please don't sing again. No. All right. Well, that is Jess with the mess. (laughs) Yes. Charlamagne, who you throwing that donkey to? I don't like how you said that. But who you throwing it at? Who you throwing it up in? (laughs) What's up? A Tennessee man. Oh, <laughs> named Charles Doty. He okay. needs to come to the front of the okay. congregation. He got a big gun. We're going to talk about it. Yo, that's crazy. Can you learn your lesson? All right, Yo. we'll get to it next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Hiring isn't cheap. With new hires costing almost $5,000, you want to get it right. Four out of five employees on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate on the first day. Get hiring right. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash breakfast. <laughs> Don't be out here acting like a donkey. Hee haw, bitch. Hee haw. It's time for Donkey of the Day. Mm-hmm. I'm a big boy. I can take it. If he feel I deserve it, ain't no big deal. I know Charlamagne guy gonna have some funny shit to say out of his mouth. If you gotta say something you may not agree with, doesn't mean I'm mean. Who's getting that donkey? That donkey. That donk, 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 donk. Donkey of the Day right there. <laughs> it's the Breakfast Club, bitches. You can call me the Donkey of the Day, but like... I mean no harm. Yes, Donkey of the Day for Thursday, September 14th goes to a Tennessee man named Charles Doty. Charles is 64 years old. Now, let the record show the president of the Fat Lives Matter Committee begged me to do this story. He Mm. said it could serve as a PSA to people everywhere. Now, when I read the story, okay, it was no question to me Charles Doty should get Donkey of the Day, but the president of the Fat Lives Matter Committee wanted me to give it to the other party involved. Who was the other party involved? Well... It was the employees of Little Caesars Pizza. Let's go to Inside Edition for the report, please. One man allegedly went too far when he was told his Little Caesars Pizza was not hot and ready. Pulling an AK-47 on employees and demanding his food ASAP. Hmm. He points the gun up, points it at me, where's my pizza? I want my pizza now. 
Kimberly Morell told a local news station in Knoxville, Tennessee, that it was her first day on the job. The hangry customer, identified by police as 53-year-old Charles Doty Jr., reportedly became upset when he was told he would have to wait 10 minutes for a pepperoni pizza. Morell says he left the store, went to his car, and came back with the weapon. Another customer in the store who had gotten her pepperoni pizza reportedly gave it over to Doty, and that was enough to make him leave. The employees called the police, who tracked him down and arrested him. We are not always hot and ready. Never <laughs> freaking listen to that. We are not always hot and ready. Doty is in jail on a $90,000 bond reportedly charged with aggravated kidnapping oh and four counts of aggravated assault. Now, Jess and Envy, when you hear that story, who do y'all think should get donkey today in this situation? The man who pulled the AK-47 on the Little Caesars employees because his pizza was taking too long or the employees for taking too long with the pizza? Both. What? Both. You take both? Both. Who do you take, Envy? You can't pull out an AK-47 on somebody preparing pizza. That's what Absolutely. I would Absolutely. And you can't sell your business on 10 minutes, we hot and ready, and then it's 12 minutes. Damn, you but can. a whole AK-47? No, I, I'm not justifying him no. doing that. Oh. Uh, no, not at all, DT. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm not. I'm yes. just saying that, yeah, no, he should get donkey first and go yes. to jail and all that. But now y'all should y'all should know. If it ain't done in 10 minutes, that's false advertisement. Y'all have to, y'all need to be penalized as well. Just like the president of the Fat Lives Matter Committee. Wow. He feels the same way. He's not justifying violence, uh, you know, or pulling an AK-47 on people, right. but he's trying to tell me there's justifiable reasons to do what this man did. I disagree. I mm -hmm. asked him why does he hate when his food is late, and he just went on a whole fat rant about the fast food industry. He said, well, first off, anytime you order food and you got to wait for it, you have to make food at home while you waiting on what you ordered. Who does that? Whoa, fat, nah. The fat man. He said it's like, <laughs> he said, <laughs> the fat man. He said yeah. it's like an appetizer. Wow. And he, said, he said Lil Caesar doesn't have appetizers, so I said, what about cheesy bread? He said it's considered uh, an appetizer, but he looks at it as part of the hot and ready family. It is. And he said that not only... Uh, he, could he see somebody pulling an AKA on fast food workers? He said, uh, who don't have the food in the timely manner? He said, the ride share drivers. He said, because mm. the ride share drivers who don't speak English. He said, because when you don't speak English and you call him to see exactly, when they call you to see exactly where your house is at, mm -hmm. it drives him crazy knowing his food is minutes away, but he can't get to it because he, he doesn't understand uh, what, what <laughs> the person language. is saying. Really? Like, yes. Yo, I ain't gonna lie. Okay, and I'm skinny, and I okay. just went through that. Yesterday, so he is—he's definitely <laughs> what? right. He's what? right, and when you hungry, yo, and they put your food on somebody else's step, yo, <laughs> that's yeah. It's not enough to put an AK forty-seven on people. He also said everything on the menu should be customizable. He said what you put on the menu should be considered a suggestion, and he said he said he said like we should be able to mix and match meals. Like if you want a quarter pounder and you want to add a fish fillet to the quarter pounder, he said you should be able to do that. What? Yo, this ain't got nothing to what, do what, with the, the original you, story. Crazy. You put fish on top of the Big Mac? The ma yes. That's under what French he said. fries? Yes. He just went on this whole rant, man. Jesus Christ. Dang. That's, that's but, a heart attack. But right this there. is exactly why the Snickers commercial hit so hard because people really aren't themselves when they hungry. Okay, this man, yeah. Charles Dole, he pulled an AK-47 on someone because his $6 pizza was going to take 10 minutes. He asked for a free order of crazy bread, and they didn't give it to him. So he left Little Caesars and came back with an AK-47. And do you know the woman he pulled the gun on? It was her first day on the job. I know. That's horrible. Come man. on, man. Can you yeah. imagine? No. This is a person excited to have a gig. Might yeah. have been a little young girl. Now she got PTSD. Yeah. Pizza traumatic stress disorder. She yeah. don't want to work at no pizza place. Jesus. Not Little Caesar, Pizza right. Hut, mm. Domino's, nothing. Mm. Okay? She should sue Caesars. What, what you, somebody just oh delivered that. God. Man, I'm not playing with you, man. What is what that? Is that? It's a note from the president of the Fat Lives Matter Committee. It says, furthermore, uh, some other reasons. Why you he write it on some a plate? I don't know. With it's just a plate. Is that ketchup? <laughs> 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 he said, you don't own the sauces. You don't get no bonus for saving the restaurant 12 sauces. Yo, that's a fact. Right. No, that's, right a fact. That, like that's, that's a fact. That's a fact. And I'm not even I, fat. I want some no, ketchup. Can you give me two no, packets? No, man. I want Polynesian sauce. Knock you only off. give me one? Yeah. Knock no, no. They can give us more than that. I'm nah. with him, I'm with him no, on that. Damn. Can I get a little salt and pepper, too? Knock it off. That, none of this is a reason to pull a weapon of mass destruction on a fast food employee. Okay? A $10 pizza is going to cost this man tens of thousands of dollars in lawyer fees and probably his freedom because he's taking a blind pee. A blind pee. <laughs> <laughs> blind plea okay. okay and his sentence mm. is going to be determined by a criminal court judge so we'll got... race. okay y'all want to do that too okay <laughs> <Sad>. <laughs> right. all right well i guess let's play a game of guess what 
Racist! <laughs> well, okay. Give me my clues. Charles Doty, mad that a pizza from Little Caesars was going to take more than 10 minutes. So he left the restaurant, came back with an AK-47, and pulled it on the employee nice. just because his pizza was late. Guess what racing is? Fat. Wow. Damn. Fat's a race now? <laughs> oh, you wow. made him double. You made you made the president of the Fat Lives Matter committee double over. I had to check it. There might have been a heart attack. I didn't make yeah, sure. Yeah, I was going to say, is he, is he happy about it? <laughs> what? Just, what race? You said fat? Yeah. Fat is not a race. Anyway. Okay. Uh, Jess Hilarious. Charles what? Doty. White. Okay. Shake it up, shake it up. Who's closer? <laughs> Jess Hilarious is absolutely correct. Charles Doty is Caucasian. Hey. And he's not fat. No, he's and not. fat is not a race. I know right. that. I knew okay. that. But I, if I had to pick one, that's that's what I would lean towards. Oh my god! Please, please let Remy Ma give Charles Doty the biggest hee haw. Man, cut it out, man. Hee haw, hee haw! <laughs> you stupid mother. Are you? Did he just bring you donuts? A box of empty donuts. Well, it's two. Oh my god! Are they half you? Hit with another note. Another plate. And mind your business. If I order five meals, don't tell me that's a lot of food. Nigga, I know that. Just put the order in. <laughs> <laughs> he, get, he getting some stuff what off his hell? chest. That's a lot of stuff. He All getting right. some stuff off his breast. Well, shout to BET. <laughs> BET, this is our 100th episode. So we got to... Come on, get your thing, man. Oh. Shout out to BET. You got to take off the top. Pause. And now just push this hard. Pause. Okay. Oh, you Yo, about I'm a woman. You don't gotta pause with me. Oh, you're right. You you're don't right, ever right. pause with the men. You pause with the women. Yeah, That's you're crazy. right. You're right. Happy hundredth episode. <laughs> You'll be mad. Whoever gotta clean that up. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> I B E T. We'll see you tomorrow. Mm. Woo! See you tomorrow, B E T. <laughs> the president of the Fat Lives Committee. Oh my goodness. All right. When we come back, Tiffany Haddish will be joining us. That's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. I eat y'all. The Breakfast Club. The cheeks out at the VMAs, Tiff. I know it's my first time my cheeks out. Did you see my nipples, too? I ain't see the nipples. I, I, just had, ni I had nipples out and I had cheeks out. So I, I was ass out. <laughs> I was ass out. What inspired that look? Um. Well, you know, I'm moving it. I'm pivoting into music. And it, what I notice is if you're doing music, you got to have your ass out. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I All mean, the girls are If you're you going to make it you're in right. music, you got to have that ass out. <laughs> if you ain't got cool. your ass out, you ain't going to make it in music. That is true. If now you a female in music, ass out. Damn. Now, now your single has <laughs> Damn. random people. Like, that, like, these people don't connect, but you connect them, right? I'm the connection. Little John uh -huh. and Fabio. Fabio Foreign. Now, now how, how was that connection? Um, do you know Bagats? Bagats is who brought it all together. He's like helps me put songs together. Mm -hmm. I've been working with him for years, and um, he was like, "If you could do a song with anybody, who would it be?" I'm like, "Lil John." I always right. wanted to do a song with Lil John. Like, mm -hmm. ever since the 1900s, I've been wanting to know Lil John. Mm -hmm. So he reached out to him, and he was like, "What you know about Fabio?" And I was like, "Who's that?" And then he was like, he put me on. I was like, "Oh, I love his music. I know who you're talking about." He was like, I'm, I, "I think we should get all that together." I was like, "Let's see if we can get them all together." Now, now the first. I don't think that's random at all, though, because Little John is crunk. Right. And to me, all of that drill energy and all of that, it all derives from the crunk energy. It, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's called evolution, but, envy. But when you met Little John, did you do, yeah, yeah, did you do that? Because everybody no, has to do that. You didn't do it? I didn't do that. Oh. I didn't do that. Because I don't like when people be <laughs> like, she ready, all in my face. <laughs> like, So I didn't do that to him. What I did to him was like, yo, I respect you. I enjoy you. You have no idea. I used to be the mascot in high school. I've done so many routines to your music. Matter of fact, let me show you one. And then I just danced right there on Sunset. What was the routine? Uh, oh, boy. Let's see this. Yeah, yeah, we see. You got the energy. Let's show. go. You need the music? <laughs> what song here you need? <laughs> okay. <laughs> He couldn't say no to you no, after, that. No after that. He got to do the feature after that. Well, he had already did it. Oh, oh okay, okay, he okay. already did it. He did it before we met in person. I'm glad you did this because I feel like Lil John is a person we don't celebrate enough, man. Yes, like I, I really do. I think he is one of the greatest producers. Absolutely. Ever. Uh, tell the club closes. It's clearly based off true events. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you said the club <laughs> You hang out with me. I, right. I will stay to the end of the party. Yes, you will. I like a good party. Oh, you, you're that person. That four o'clock. You just like why the lights on. Two vodkas, good music. I'm dancing all night to yeah, tell people it's like barely anybody there. <laughs> when it's barely anybody there, that's the best part. You, you've been doing the music, though, and I don't think people realize, like a lot of times when they watch your specials or the C Ready specials, you put your music on those specials. Yeah, I put my music on the specials. A lot of the TV shows that I'm in mm -hmm. and movies that I've been in. And that one I did with Billy Crystal, 
I sang all through that. I've been talking with a lot of singers and asking them, how how do you do this? Mm-hmm. I met Janet. I asked her, how do you sing and dance and do all wait, that wait, and wait, not wait, be windy? Where did you Janet at? I went to her concert. Okay. We're at the Hollywood Bowl mm-hmm. in um, Los Angeles. LA, uh-huh. mm-hmm. And then she had an after party and I went to the after party. She told me she loved that I cut my hair. Mm-hmm. She said, oh my goodness, I love when you cut your hair. It's so beautiful. I've always wanted to do that, but you know, it's not like from my era, it's like frowned upon. It's frowned upon to cut your hair. And she's like, I just love that you did that. And I'm like, thank you. Now tell me your magic. Mm -hmm. How do you sing and dance at the same time? She said, you practice. I was like, ah, that's the part I don't like. Mm -hmm. But the part you practice. I do practice a lot of things, but singing and dancing, no. Mm -hmm. I just either dance. Or sing. Or or tell jokes. I don't even. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a rapper. Mm Mm-hmm. But I can sing now. <laughs> now, how you been doing with the, with the strike that's been going on? Because I mean, movies and touring and everything that's going. How how has that have affected you? Um, the strike. Look, it's it's a situation. I've been out there, you know, m- walking around, marching, if you will, protesting, if you will, mm-hmm. and it, things need to be resolved. But f- for me, during this time, okay, that part of it is exercise, kind of. I really wish I could be on those committees and help negotiate. Um, I'm really good at negotiations. I like to think. But uh, with, with this downtime, I've been focusing more on my music. Mm-hmm. I have a little farm uh, right in South Central LA. And now it's officially a farm because I have bees and I harvest the honey mm-hmm. and I'll be selling the honey. So I bees in the trap. That's so that's, bees that's, in the trap. That's <laughs> smart. Last person I know that did that was Dr. Oz. Yep. Dr. Oz had a bee problem in his backyard. So he decided to start harvesting the uh, the honey from the bees. Yeah, right. and once you start harvesting it, and when you sell it, you become you become a farmer, and that's the tax write off. And the tax is a uh, super duper low. Yep, super low. And then I've been focusing more on my properties. I went ahead and bought a couple more, and I've been turning these like duplexes and apartment buildings into like transitional living situations for foster oh. youth. And I get to spend more time with them, and I'm learning more from them, and I'm teaching them more of what I know. So I have a little more time to be more useful in my community. I love it. So I love it. Mm-hmm. And so the I grocery really store it. you open it is going that's clearly gonna be farm farm right to the grocery store. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And I want it to be, you know, black farmers and black vendors. I noticed that all these other communities they have, you know, you know, there's a Hispanic farm the Hispanic farm, but a Hispanic grocery store, Jewish mm-hmm. grocery store, mm-hmm. you know, uh Asian grocery stores. Mm-hmm. But I never see black grocery stores. Mm-hmm. So we gonna do that. That's what I'm doing. Word. Are you still happy in this business? For the most part, yeah. I've been warned of all kind of things that could happen mm-hmm. before before I really got in. Half of those things have happened. Mm. Really? Half of them have happened. And it's like, you know, the people that you love the most, they're probably going to turn their back on you. Uh, you're going to find out who your real friends are. Mm-hmm. You're going you gonna to help people and they're going to stab you right in your face, not even in your back. Mm. And it's sad. That part is sad. But I'm glad because then I don't have to be with your fake ass for my whole life. Mm-hmm. You know, because I love when I love you, I love you. You know that. Absolutely. Like when I love people, I love them. I show up for them. And I don't want to show up for nobody that don't really love me. Does it, does it give you trust issues? Yeah, I got trust issues for mm. sure. I used to trust people so much. Just easily trust. Like mm-hmm. I take you for face value. But now I don't do that no more. Now I'm like, I hired investigator to background check anybody new in my life. <laughs> do you really? Yeah, I hired somebody to background check. Every, like if you want to be in my world, you're gonna get. there's going to be a background check. I'm going to know your business. So you must have found some crazy stuff about people. People done this out here. I had to s- stop talking to them. They probably think like, oh, Tiffany must have changed your number. I didn't change my number. I blocked you. Damn. Mm. <laughs> Damn. I blocked mm. your ass. How did that impact your, your love life? Um. So now I'm very even more selective. So do the background check. Did you know that you can do STD tests at home? No. Off of Amazon, you can order STD kits. Oh, you guys are married. Now, so you don't know I, I, about heard, this. I heard you got a dog, that you had a dog that can sniff STDs. But yeah, tell about this first. No, so the dog died. Oh, damn. The dog died January of 20. You must have sniffed the wrong STD. <laughs> <laughs> nah, she's 14 years old. Oh, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. She's old. Pit bull. Mm-hmm. So um, um, I've learned that on Amazon, you can buy STD testing kits. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I'll do a background check on the guy. I'll hang out with them for a while, for a month or two, maybe three, four. Let them take me out nice places and stuff. And once I decide, Okay, I want to hook up with this dude. I'll be like, you got to take this test. It takes about two weeks. Some of them are instant, and some of them takes about two weeks to come back with the results. I'm like, when the results come back, you're going to these cheeks. And then that's how that goes. And as soon as he asks me for any money or say he forgot his wallet or he seemed kind of broke, I disappear. Damn. All right, we got more with Tiffany Haddish when we come back. Let's get into her single. This one features Little John and Fabio Foreign. 
to the club close. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Oh, uh, the Breakfast Club. <laughs> Tiffany Haddish is still here. Charlamagne? Are you, are you, would you ever date another man in the industry? Nah, I'm cool on that. I like small business owners. <laughs> I'm about the small business owners. Why don't you like the industry? Nah, I want small business <laughs> owners. <laughs> she says she likes small penises and small business owners. <laughs> She that didn't say small like. penises. I no, do like small penis. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I like a good medium. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, I like a medium and a small business owner. Word. Because small business owner is going to appreciate me a little more than a dude in the industry. I feel mm-hmm. like also dudes in the industry, it's like egos and stuff involved. And mm-hmm. if you shine a little bit too bright, if this is whatever. You know, I done talked to a few guys in this business and I just realized they're better at doing their job of being a celebrity and I'm better not being with that person. So what about mm-hmm. if it's a small business person with a, a bigger size penis? I don't want the big penis. I have endometriosis, so I'm good. I don't want to hurt. What is it? What is that? I don't again? know. I was I was hoping you would know. What is it? Google what is endometriosis. I can't you even spell, spell it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Endo. Endo. Endometriosis. Oh, Hello. Oh, oh, so endometriosis. Endometriosis. I see it. Hold on. I got it. So it's it it's says, it's something that women suffer from. Disorder in which a tissue similar to the tissue, tissue that yeah. lines the uterus grows outside the uterus in places where it doesn't belong. Right, and then it can overgrow on the inside of the uterus, and it causes pain. Mm. So if you're dealing with somebody with a whole lot of meat, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's gonna be a situation, and it's a little discomfort. Oh, wow. It's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable, and I and I suffer from discomfort every month. And I thought it was normal, oh. and I just I'm just now finding out this year that that's not normal. Your cycle is not supposed to hurt. If it hurts when you're on your cycle. That's a problem. Yep. There's Dang. a problem there. It's not supposed to hurt at all. Maybe you get a little tired because you're losing blood, but you shouldn't. It shouldn't be painful. And if it's painful, you probably have uh, endometriosis. Now, true, it says there may be heavy bleeding or pain during sex or when having bowel. Uh, no, nah, I don't be bleeding during it. sex. I don't do that. But it means there's more meat down there then, in the in <laughs> in the vagina. Well, it is meaty. Well, tell us about your partnership with the Arby's Foundation. <laughs> 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 We got the meat. <laughs> you want this Tiffany sandwich? No, no. With the Arby's Foundation. <laughs> but my partnership with the Arby's Foundation is quite awesome. So uh, I don't know if you know this, but uh, there's a lot of children in uh, America that are having an issue with affording lunch. Absolutely. It's it's hard to afford lunch and uh, a lot of them are incurring debt. So they'll let them eat, they'll let the kids eat lunch but there'll be a debt that occurs and in order to graduate or get their d- diploma they have to pay off that debt and it's it's a, it's up to like 19 million dollars. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's a lot. It's a lot. So the Arby's Foundation has decided to put up a million dollars towards that debt to make sure these kids can graduate and get their degrees and, or their diplomas. Um and I got really excited about that cuz I remember, you know, having a lunch ticket, mm-hmm. getting right. that free lunch okay. and being able to learn better. When I'm hungry, I don't learn so good. But when I'm full, my ability to learn is a lot better. Right. So well, I was gonna ask you were at the VMAs. We seen you there. What, what was your thought on the VMAs? Tell us about it. Because everything was just so great. In the way that it was set up, it felt like I was in like this super like fun spaceship concert. Because you know the aliens are coming. So I'm just waiting for my alien husband to come to take me Damn. away. You ready for an alien at this point? Is that bad? Or is yeah, that- I'm cool. I'm cool. I want an alien husband. I think it'd be dope. We could levitate together, talk to each other with our minds. Yeah. Did you get your heart broken last? Last summer. Oh. He was a big business owner. Mm. Oh well. A big business owner. Big business owner. What? And what happened? Y'all broke up? I don't even know if we was really together. Well, you see, y'all married, so you don't know this life. I get but it. the single women out here know what I'm talking about. You, yeah. you think you in a relationship, you're not sure. It feel like it because you at his house all the time, you at your house, but then you find out that you got a whole got, other family. Yeah, it's the situation. Jesus. Damn. So what stops you from putting people like that on blast? I don't want to be, I don't want my picture next to that picture. <laughs> 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 what I've learned about this business, watch who you talk about because your picture will be next to that picture. <laughs> <laughs> side by side shot. I don't oh, even, <laughs> 
<laughs> and everybody be like, mm, but I'm gonna give me an alien husband. It's gonna be off the chain. And then we probably will do a reality show together. My alien husband. <laughs> my alien. Are you going yeah. back on the road tour? Comedy? Yeah, yeah. I start October first. Uh, I'm back on the road doing comedy, uh, and I'm in Atlantic City. Uh, I'm doing a bunch of casinos. So that should be cool. I should meet an alien in there. It, What's your favorite way to tell a story now? Because I asked Cedric to entertain you that earlier. Is it is it books? Is it movies? Is it TV? Is it, you know, stand-up? What's your favorite way to tell a story? My favorite way to tell a story is in stand-up. And then to watch that turn into something even bigger mm -hmm. is great. You know, I got a Grammy for telling stories. That's right. Mm -hmm. I got nominated for a Grammy for reading out loud. My drama teacher was so proud. I had to let her know, girl, you, I'm glad you sat down with me because nominated for a Grammy so um, but yeah on stage live in a room full of people and getting that immediate gratification mm -hmm. hearing the people I, it's the best is it's it unnecessary best. pressure though because of, because of your star has risen so much so are you able to go out there and just work out the way you would want to I always do uh, and sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad and I don't care what they say as long as it feels good to me. Right, right, right. Yeah, as long as it feels good to me. <laughs> now, did you really get paid for your first movie by selling DVDs? Did the producer take? Yeah, he you? really just handed me some DVDs and said, "Good luck, sell those." Like, I, I, that's wow. I, and I see the movie on TV all the time, and it pisses me off because I get nothing, and wow. I, I became homeless during that time. Wow. Like while I was shooting that movie, I became homeless. I didn't have nowhere to stay. I was sleeping in my car. On the set, I was always on time to work. Never was late because I was sleeping in the parking lot, waiting for everyone to get to set. Damn, like it was that was the worst. But you know, some people when they heard you say that, they thought you were talking about girls trip. Hilarious. <laughs> they didn't, they didn't know. No. <laughs> but I've been in this business since 1996. Exactly. Uh, and that was in 2003 when that happened. Wow. Yeah, my first movie. Where I was the star of the movie, it was in 2003. I yeah. bet you'll never work with that producer again. Never. Hey, you know what's crazy? I saw that director sitting on a bus, on a bus stop, and he looked a damn mess. And I said, oh, they didn't pay you either, huh? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, oh, Tiffany! <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, do you need a ride? He was like, yeah. And then he came up to the car, and I could smell him. I said, oh, I got to go the other way. I'm sorry. Damn. He smelled really bad. Damn. Jesus. It's one of those smells that you know it's going to stick in your, it's going to stick. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want, I didn't want that to stick. Are you putting out a whole album? Yeah, well, we drop a couple of singles mm -hmm. and then put out a whole album. So I, I would like for the whole album to come out on my birthday, Ooh. which is December the third. Okay, you know, so I always like to drop something around my birthday. Absolutely. It's my Absolutely. gift to the world. Are you you not signed to nobody though, right? She ready music. She ready, yeah, 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 yeah. I have my own label. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I figured I put my money into that. There you go, <laughs> Tiffany. We appreciate you joining us. I we, appreciate y'all so too. Much. This is like a dream. You've been, been, been here times. times. No, I, I feel like I'm in a dream right now. Oh, oh. you still sleep. <laughs> she still sleep. That's why. <laughs> it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Come on, you laugh. You heard what I said. I, I hear said what for you the rest said. of my life, I'm gonna be high and laugh. When I'm when I wake up in the morning and I see headlines that say DJ Envy recalls being stood up by R. Kelly after being oh my god in Chicago. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You recalled? I'm supposed to take life serious when you I see recalled stuff like that. being flewed out and stood up by R. Kelly. Come on, man. Logan, where you at, man? You gotta come back home, man. Ever since your daddy ain't been getting body slammed by you no more, he just been wildin'. <laughs> you used to keep him in check. We need the man you know of the saying? house. Why back, you man. leave me at the hotel, uh? <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Cause you're 19, you old age, <laughs> too old." 47 telling stories about being stood up uh, by R. Kelly after being flown to Chicago, flewed out. I didn't say that, man. I didn't say that. You need to go talk to somebody. He wanted man. me to do a mixtape. <laughs> I'm telling my truth. He wanted me to do a mixtape. Nah, I gotta find the right type of specialist for him. Is that, oh, I'm you not need a trying to be rude, but I don't do dudes. Rude, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't do dudes. Man, <laughs> let's get the Justin. That's what I'm talking about. Right. The news is real. The news is real. Solaris, Justin, Robin Williams. Just don't do no lies. This is the rumor report. I don't do that. Stop. Just the message. Oh, I don't know the difference. I don't think he take himself serious. That don't take my <laughs> mental serious. <laughs> Faith Evans received. Uh, Faith Evans revealed that she doesn't date men with small penises during her recent appearance on the Marriage or Mirage podcast. Oh, that sounds like something I should get into. Faith Evans detailed what she looks for in a man. We have audio for that. What are some automatic turnoffs? A little d is a d 
and turn off for me. You could have been a grower. I don't believe in that. <laughs> I don't believe in that grower. You got to have something to grow. <laughs> Hello? So that's my kind of girl. I want to see something. Like, I need to see something for it to get to the bigger part. You could be missing out on a blessing because you don't understand the. Up no, I'm not. <laughs> not that type of blessing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me ask y'all a question. Yes. Envy and Charlemagne. Yes. Mm -hmm. How do y'all think Biggie had a big one? Shut up, man. <laughs> hey, yo. Because there's a reason she's saying this. Either she's trying to throw shade at Stevie, oh, or she's Lord, saying Lord, at the at the Biggie we wasn't doing that. Look at Envy contemplating. Because you gotta think about headline. it. You really have to, to make think about it. Dumb ass headline. I'm like, wow. DJ Envy says Biggie was, wasn't that small. <laughs> no, 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 no. DJ Envy <laughs> ponders over the size because <laughs> he got that thinking face. Like, ah, oh, was he? And is that why <laughs> Tupac said that she slept with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that though? I don't have no idea. I do know one thing. The shaming of the growers has to stop. Okay. okay. I am a grower. Okay. All right. And sometimes I get out the okay. shower and wish I had more hang time, but I don't. <laughs> but when it's time for action, seven inches, you, three, four. You get it packed. Eight, eight when it's warm out. Okay. That's, right. That's We nice. don't believe you. <laughs> I you didn't. I didn't. Ain't no we. You don't believe him because you know the truth. <laughs> you well, you I know like the real truth. <laughs> What'd you say? What'd what? You say? I like Lil D. <laughs> what yeah, is I like Lil D. Well, Faith Evans uh, don't like Lil D. That's I'm what going to human resources today. That, enough is enough. Man, enough you got, is you, enough. You've got to have a file in there that you don't know about. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, okay. Kanye West wants a home without electricity and windows. This this what? story, I know, right? <laughs> this story is uh, hilarious for a couple of different reasons. So, basically... Kanye West, he hired this guy named Tony Saxon, right, to mm -hmm. be his property manager. He mm -hmm. bought this house in uh, Malibu, and he, this guy wore many hats. When he hired Tony, he was doing, he was the caretaker, he was security, he was doing renovations, he was in charge of all of that. Kanye West made a request, like, yo, I don't want no electricity and no windows in the house. No Just bring in a bunch of, yep, bring in a bunch of gen generators. So Tony Saxon was like, yo, mm -hmm. that what? is dangerous. Like, I don't know. Like, that's that's not a good idea. So basically, he gave him pushback and Kanye fired him uh, basically for telling him no. That's the, I mean, and making a decision for his safety, obviously. So he fired him. Um, and then after he got fired, Tony Saxon then opened up a lawsuit. He's suing him for firing him. He worked for Kanye West for two months. Mm -hmm. Kanye only paid him for a week. What's the working? What's the point? And I want electricity, but wanting all the generators. I want to, I want to know the science. They didn't it. go into that. But the that's reason why like he, electricity, right? he didn't. Yeah. But the reason why he didn't want windows because he said he don't like glass. Now he was sued for something <laughs> similar before. I can't with y'all this morning. Because man. with Donda Academy, they didn't have no windows either. They just mm -hmm. had like the skylights, and so when it would rain, it would get wet in the class. Yo, shut up. Yo, man. for real, yo, mm. for real. That's what it is. I'm just with the mess. I'm doing good today. For real, this Our is, news this is real. what it is. Allegedly. Yo. Yes. So I think I think that's funny. That, that's funny. But his kids will never want to come over his house. Nah. Crazy. Kanye wanna live in a cave. There are actually there are actual people that lives like this though. Well, with no windows and no electricity. No windows, no electricity. There are people that live like this on in our world. Yeah. Yeah. No? I don't believe that. You don't believe that? No way. Wow. I'm, I'm going to show you. I'm telling you. I'm going to do my research. I'm going to tell you them all where they at. <laughs> all right. There's people that live like that. Well, that is just with the mess. All right? It is. Let's get to the People's Choice Mix. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. NFL is here. DraftKings Sportsbook is an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today and use code ENVY for a special offer when you sign up. That's code ENVY, E-N-V-Y, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, shout out to everybody. I was out last night. Uh, it was uh, my wife's friend's birthday party. She had like a, a Jamaican bashment in the city. Uh, so shout to Toya, happy birthday, a Toya. A box your mouth bash. No, it's not mm. a box your mouth bash. It wasn't a box your mouth bash. It was a <laughs> Shout out to uh, Louis V, who's up there. He was hanging out with me My last guy, night. My guy, Louis V. Yes. Uh, Cardi B was in there. I seen, well, who else? Kodak Black, French Montana, Rich the Kid. Uh, mm. Who else was in there? Uh, well, good people, it sound like. A bunch of people in there. We had a good time. Mm -hmm. Serrani. It's, it's, it's Serrani. Yeah. Cranium was in there. It was it was a great time That's last night. Time. So salute to everybody that came out, had a good time last night. I'm tired. I'm paying for it now. <laughs> I am paying for it. I tried to invite Jess, but Jess didn't hit me back. Oh my God! I was too busy cleaning up the mess you made with Tyrese. I was being his therapist <laughs> on the phone. Damn. You said, "Oh, Jess." He said, "Why Envy's out there partying and getting his life 
and not thinking of me. See what I'm saying? I'm here still thinking of him, praying for him every day. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Tyrese got just as a therapist. You got Tyrese as a And he over there with Kodak Black. You know what I'm saying? Mm. <laughs> you about to make Kodak Black his pastor. Kodak Black gonna christen the next child, huh, Envy? I'm not having no more kids. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done he with said, I'm done with this. I'm done with the kids. Yeah, it just right. got shows this weekend. Yeah, where you at? I sure do. Duvo. Duvo. How you do the E better than me, yo? Duvo. I will be in Jacksonville, Florida this weekend. I got shows tomorrow, two of them tomorrow, and two on Saturday, y'all. I will not be doing meet and greet because I don't care what nobody say. That sickness is back out here, and I ain't trying to get sick for nobody. But I will be there. Tomorrow and Saturday, we got four shows. Get your tickets at justhilariousofficial.com or comedyzone.com. All right. When we come back, we got the positive note. Don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlamagne the guy, Jess Hilarious. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, uh, shout to OVO Eli, one of the producers up here. He's super duper excited. He can't wait for Drake's album to drop. For Aww. the dogs. Everything is for the dogs. Yo, for my dogs, for the dogs, for the dogs. <laughs> so I think Drake is releasing a single tomorrow, right? I heard you releasing a single tomorrow with SZA. Yeah, with SZA. Oh, mm-hmm. I got to do. Oh, she going okay. So they gonna, remember they were a thing before, like in the, back in the day. Back in the day, yeah. But she ain't want nobody know that, and he did. So remember he went and he said it, and she was like, "Boy, why would you say that?" But yeah, now they doing a song together. That's mm-hmm. nice. Yeah, so that happens tomorrow. So I'm sure we'll be playing that tomorrow. Mm-hmm. All right, mm-hmm. Charlamagne, you got a positive note? I do, man. The positive note. Don't ever feel bad for making a decision about your own life that upsets other people. You are not responsible responsible for their happiness, okay? You're responsible for your own happiness. And anyone who wants you to live in misery for their happiness should not be in your life to begin with. Have a great day. Breakfast Club, bitches! We all finished or y'all done?